The scene at Subiaco level for Sunday football and it's Fremantle at home to the Tigers as we mentioned. Matthew Richardson, the Tigers say they're close to re-signing him and that's certainly a big bonus for their fans. He's been in rare form in the last month or so. The Dockers improving, they've won two of their last three. Last week a tad disappointing against the Western Bulldogs. Toss of the coin. Chris Bond wins it against his old side and will kick towards the city end of Subiaco Oval. The Dock is playing mostly for pride at this stage of the season but obviously future employment also looms large. Some of these players want to be around next season. Next month is interesting for them. And the Tigers, bigger fish to fry I'd suggest, still thinking about the finals. They start the day at 5-7. and seven. They defeated Geelong Friday night before last at the MCG. They stormed home and the win looked good on paper. It was a solid win. They kicked the last four or five goals in the game. Welcome along to Subiaco Oval around Australia. The second leg of our Sunday double header. The Tigers up against the Dockers. And obviously, gentlemen, as I'm joined by Terry Wheeler and John Worsfold down the line, the sort of game, Terry, we've been talking about it before. If Richmond want to play in the finals, this is the sort of contest they've got to win. There's no doubt about that, Dennis. And uh, the firmer conditions over here at Subiaco, they'll look forward to that. The Tigers have spent a tough haul, a couple of wet sessions for them. Really, the midfield, Knights, Broderick, you've spoken about those uh, earlier on, and then Richardson. They just seem to have a lot going for them, but the Dockers, I was very impressed with their last month of football. Other than the first quarter last week, which when they allowed the Dogs to get away by six goals and then maintained it for the rest of the match, their month hasn't been too bad. Now they've been playing a lot better football, there's no doubt about that, Terry. And they, they really just want to keep on trying to win their odd game here and there to, uh, to set themselves up, give themselves confidence going into uh, future seasons under Damien Drum. But there's no doubt he's been learning a lot from the Fremantle players. And down on the boundary this afternoon, Adrian Barrage. Thanks. Barrett, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, rain is forecast this afternoon. It is holding off at the moment. The wind is right to left, which means the Dockers will have first use of it, and it is quite a breeze. I've just seen Stephen O'Reilly head down to the back line, so he may get first crack at Matthew Richardson. Oh, no, it looks like Shane Parker will start with him. Looks like a great game, boys. Chris Bond has got Matthew Knights. So away we go, there's the bounce in the centre, Gale goes up and slaps it down, Daffy hurriedly out of the middle, down towards half forward, Harding driven into the ground, testing the shoulder immediately, he's getting a free kick. Well that three was always weeks. going to occur wasn't it? Yeah, three weeks and back he comes off that collarbone, remarkable. Should be wrestling, across it comes to Black, quick recuperative powers, back it comes to Black from Bandy to Harding. Behind the target, O'Reilly confronted, back to Harding, getting a workout early. Kicks it inside the 50, Clive is down there, Waterhouse got a right hand on the ball. Crashing in with ship over the top is Kellaway. That's Andrew Kellaway. Bowden goes in and ties it up. And the ball up, off the ball. Dragon Civic having a bit to do with Prescott. The umpires this afternoon, Bozzo, McBurney and McLaren. Spot the odd one out. So the ball to be bounced, true centre half forward position. Dockers in attack. Gale just a big thump out wide, trying to get it out of the zone. Knights in hard. Daffy wins the ball. Quick hands. Campbell winning early touches on out to Chaffee on the left foot. Kicks towards centre half forward. There's heavy tension behind play. Richardson can't complete the mark. Bandy can't find the football. Broderick through hard. It's opening as fierce and ferocious early. And the Dockers are up to the task. Weirah drives forward towards the forward pocket. Caught in behind. Clement couldn't take the mark. Down to Gasper. Clears for the Tigers. Back out to the wing. And Richardson gets his first mark for the afternoon. Matthew Richardson on the wing. 
into space. Awkward kick, though. Dan Blacker look at it. Knocked it away from Broderick. Still Broderick. Stood up in the tackle. Samson can't control it. Down goes Parker. Up at the top, Richardson. A wrestle and the ball up. Bandy coming through the middle. Got to get it first time. Otherwise, things like that happen. Yeah, pretty physical start. Both sides looking for the body contact. We saw Greg Harding getting driven into the ground and both sides trying to uh, get in there hard early. Holland knocked it down. Campbell, great record against the Dockers. Daffy picks it up, hurriedly onto the boot. Floats it down towards half forward. Some holding there. Samson got a fist to it. Awkward bounce for O'Reilly. Campbell did well. Cleared a path. The hand pass from Ottens to Chaffee. Chaffee on the 50. Long down towards full forward. Oh. And guess who? Richo. That's good strong mark. And there, we spoke about it earlier, Dennis. There's a lot of talk about Richardson gets a lot of his football right up the ground. But uh, this is just the athleticism of the player. He took a mark behind the wing. Next thing he bobs up in the goal square, right on the goal line, and takes a real strong mark body on body. He's a good player who can do that. Five metres out. Coming off six goals last week. He's got it. And that is a good sign for Richardson. Just the, the quality of the player. He, can, he is a player who doesn't just rely on his ability to run and cover a lot of ground, taking marks right up the ground. As he found himself in that situation, he worked hard back to the goal square, and then he was one-on-one. -on -one, the ball just coming in high, just used his strength, which he also has, to hold his player out and take a good mark. Just a quality player to have in your side up there in the full forward line. So Matthew Richardson, who upset the Dockers in the game last year, he kicked seven at the MCG in round 14, gets the first for the Tigers. Gale, it's Benny Gale, taps it on out for the Tigers. Prescott playing against his old side. Gale for the Dockers, can't wear it. Holland, Ben Holland out. O'Reilly spins this way, that way. Quick exchange of hands and the Dockers through Mark Gale push on towards the outer side. Bounces out into the open territory. Ships in the front position. He's pulled down to the ground. Play on the call from the umpire, Matthew Knights. Holds the ball up, steadies the play down. Flaps kick. Smothered at the boot, can't get away from this wing position. They're hard, they're tight, they're tough, but somehow Knights find space. Out he comes, kicks to Richardson again. Mark number three already. Looking dangerous, isn't he? I think you might see a good uh. change. He looks just too strong for uh, Parker on that occasion again. Just getting him the wrong side of the ball and being able to hold his ground, push Parker away and get his arms free to take an easy chest mark. Well, in the opener, we saw Damien Drum say he had plenty of options for Matthew Richardson. He'd better start digging into that barrel now. Richardson. He's missed to the near side. Six goals, five last week. Accuracy not always with Matthew Richardson. Certainly strength in the marking contest is. No one's taken more marks than him this year in the, con in the competition. So the Tigers now 1-1 on the board. Yes, Richardson, 14 marks last week, his season's high, 19 against Hawthorne, back in round 10. Here goes the kick, virtually up the middle of the ground, Fletcher, who's been in rare form, runs onto the loose ball and kicks towards half forward, awkward bounce down there for Wills, Bowden, almost a throw to Rogers, to Knights, long probing kick to right half forward, and Sampson bounces obligingly, he kicks inside the 50, intended for Flap, and that's a very good mark, strong hands by Flap. Carroll right there, but Platt needed just the one grab at it. Yeah, that's a very strong mark in front. But Matthew Knight's back midfield, he's staying well as also, he's getting his hands on the footy, and he's a player who just doesn't release the ball until he knows he's got a player free and puts it in their direction. And again, he's the one who got the ball out to Sampson, who'd run into space and a good kick in front of Platt. So Platt will kick from just inside the 50. Richmond getting a flying start here. They lead by seven points. This to increase it. Good looking effort too. Trying to come back. Hits the post. They've had a history in recent weeks of hitting the post, the Tigers. Quite a few against the Hawks. A couple against Port. And again last week. So all the attacking with Richmond at the moment. Dockers have ventured inside their 50 just the once. Harding deep in the defensive pocket. 
And now just clear the area, does that in the halfback flank, but it's all Tigers out there. And Rich, Richardson just so easily takes the mark, brings it back into centre half forward. There's a pair of Tigers there, Campbell takes it, looks towards Ottens, steps back off it now, kicks to the square again, reaching up, Hollands. Ben Holland, the perfect foil for Matthew Richardson. Richardson goes out to half forward, Holland drops back. And has been that foil. Number two on the goal scoring list at Tigerland. Good kick by Campbell, just uh, gave Holland a good opportunity. Dockers are trying to juggle their back line to get the matchups right now. But on that occasion, too strong for Carroll. So Holland, who's kicked four goals three times this year, gets his first. Tigers are up two on the board. The Dockers yet to trouble them. Yeah, they certainly are. The Tigers have started very well. And now Freeman are going to really throw around the, their back line and try and get the matchups right. They're sticking with the way they started at this stage. But uh, looking very dangerous, the, uh, the big men for the Richmond side. Taking a lot of strong marks. And uh, they're getting the ball in there pretty quick, which is what they want to those big guys. Campbell getting the ball to Holland. Interesting, Wayne Campbell has played in five of six matches between these two teams. He's averaging 30 possessions in those games. Here's Kellaway to Broderick. Broderick inside the 50. Richardson on the lead. Well, what a great start by the Tigers. Their fans would be loving this. And, and as Richardson. Impress as, as impressive, uh, Dennis and John, it's just that space that's created there at centre half forward for Richardson to lead into. Yeah, they, they do have a very good structure set up, and they play it very disciplined. And that's the key, isn't it? Disciplined players are prepared to stay out of that area. 36 goals now for this season, going at number 37. Looks pretty good. Richmond out of the blocks. A great start to Richmond. They really have jumped Fremantle. Fremantle got themselves in trouble last week against the Western Bulldogs when they gave them a big start. Couldn't peg them back at all. They hung in there after they got themselves organised. But at this stage, it's a very, very good start to Richmond. And it does make it pretty tough for sides to uh, get themselves composed, balanced again, and then work out how they're going to get the ball forward and score themselves. But really, it only takes that one goal and they're back in action. So the Tigers quickly into the game. And it's impressive because over the last month, their first quarter's only been 2, 1, 0 and 3 goals. They've got the 3 already. Here they come to centre forward. Here comes the man. Up, down, drops out of his arms. Wirra can't get away. Wrapped up in the tackle and the umpire will bounce. Dragosevic just getting a look at the footy. Running on. Here he comes. A courageous effort by Sean McManus coming in from the side to also make a contest there. Knowing that Richardson's in, had a great start to the game, McManus thought he'd throw his body in and uh, try and assist Parker. So the Tiger forward line structures up so Richardson is in the square by himself with Shane Parker. And a heap of space in front. They build it up again now. Campbell tosses it towards that space. Parker comes hard. Doesn't quite get to the ball. Handball to O'Reilly. He's under pressure immediately. Given off to Samson. He's kicked six against them for that late. Now he's got one with the Tigers. Well, they got themselves into a bit of strife there. Fremantle Parker made a great attempt to come out and take the mark. Couldn't quite get it. But then the Richmond players put the pressure on. Parker just squeezed the ball out, trying to get it to O'Reilly. But when it's heading back towards the uh, opposition goal, you're putting yourself in a dangerous position. And the numbers of the Richmond players there were good enough to put the pressure on, force the ball out. Samson made the most of his slight opportunity to slam it on his boot for another goal and a great start to Richmond. So Clem Michael is on the ground now, back in defence on Ottens. And Ottens is standing in the goal square alongside Richardson. Not even halfway on the turn. 4-2 to nothing. And that's the way they've got the 4-2 business very much. I think in the thoughts of the Tigers out of the middle. Kick towards the 50 from Black. It bounces well inside the 50. Wills, 15 metres out. Sprays it. It floats to the pocket. Back goes Mondra. Dropped it. Ship picks it up. Close to the boundary line. Smothered off the boot brilliantly. Ricochets across to Gale. Gale snaps. Two metres out. Bowden the leap. Mondra the mark. Magnificent judgment in there by Tony Modra. Contorting 
Just keeping his eye on the footy, and he found it. Yeah, that is a sensation mark under a lot of pressure. Freeman are really messing around with the ball there. Started with Wills, who looked like he should have done better with his snap on goal. He sprayed it out to the side, and then a drop mark and a smother, but it ends up with Modra. Fremantle's first goal, Tony Modra. And that's the steadying goal, Terry, that uh, when a side jumps you like Richmond have today, you start to think, well, how are we going to stop them and forget about where your goal is going to come from? When you eventually get one on the board, settles the side down, closes out what looks like an, a, a big gap, and then you can start to get your own game going and flow on. And it's always important that the full forward gets one on the board too, Rush. Especially for Modra, really struggled last week, and he'd be wrapped to get an early one on the board. So at one end of the ground, Modric gets the Dockers first. At the other end, Matthew Richardson gets his second opponent. Stephen O'Reilly has gone back there to do that job. Modric just the one goal last week. But prior to that, he picked up 36 in the last seven goals. So he's certainly doing his job there. I think Parker's off under the blood rule. It looked like he was coming off with the blood rule. And perhaps a, a force change. We'll see how that works for Fremantle. Well, perhaps he nicked himself deliberately to get away <laughs> from there. I'm not sure. But the dock is now a chance. They have to work it from half back. Clement stands on out wide to Bond. The former Tiger against his old side. Now the skipper of his new club. Norris steps through. Kicks not a good one. That scrappy play. Just the, a poor handball from Bond. And then just a really average kick by Norris. They've got to sharpen up their skills. If they want to get forward and get some score on the board. One of the real challenges in football is to fix it up after a mistake is made. A mistake from Bond needed to be fixed up by Norwich. Couldn't do it. Fletcher barges his way into the contest. Both sides trying to get the ball out. Neither can find the hold. Comes through. Norwich. Broderick. Black's in underneath. Oh, it's Fletcher. He's underneath. He'll get the free kick. The bottom of the pack you'll generally find that man on out wide to Clement through the centre of the ground. Dockers go to half forward. Probing kick inside the 50. Waterhouse goes back with great courage. Got a hand to it. Couldn't hang on. Bowden tidies up behind. Sweeps across the goal face and pinpoints it beautifully. Finds Campbell at right half back. And certainly all players from both clubs committed to that last pack. Now Campbell off a step towards the middle. This is Rogers. From half-back, drives it out towards the wing. Ottens is there, in from the side. Fletcher, no contest. Ottens tied up with Carroll. Fletcher from the wing. Spears it back towards the middle. McManus draws a man in Chaffee. Lays it off to Bandy. Bandy, untidy kick. Sending it out towards right half-forward and ship. Alongside is Gale. Knocked in that direction. Dragosivic's played it pretty well, though. He's over the ball. Over him is Gale. Trying to burrow in his Kellaway. We've got a whistle out there. And the ball up. Dennis, just an update on Shane Parker. Yes, it was the blood rule. He had a cut on his left knee. He also had to change his sock because he had blood on his sock. But he's OK. And probably at some stage we'll go back out there, I guess. Thanks, Barrett. Bouncing right half forward. Bandy. Wide of the pack. Kellaway. That's Duncan. And they run it up the ground again. Beautifully done. Gale got it across to support. Frankasevich down towards half forward. Platt missed it. Loose ball at the back. Harding across to Carroll. McManus now, just forward of half back, Marcus Pay. The Dockers have seemed to have settled, John. Yeah, they have a bit. They're still not using the ball as well as they'd like, but they're making more of a contest. They're getting a fair bit of it. And here they come again now, carrying it down this near side. Black's left foot kicking the centre forward's not good. It's intercepted by Campbell. He won't waste any time. Turns it back to Tiger's way. Ottens steps back inside. Has Clay Sampson for support, uses him. The lead from Platt, the long one to Richardson. He's gone for the ladder. Richardson's got it. Knock the chest. A little clip across the cheek. Play on the call. O'Reilly can't handle the football near the boundary line. There's a boundary throw in. Doesn't look much, does it? But sometimes that finger, if it just gets you, it uh, has split him open. So uh, Richardson will have to come off now as Parker's is running back on to pick him up. But uh, Richardson will have to come off with the blood rule, I would say. And this is good, Dennis. Now I'm getting an insight into the toughness of John Wall's fault because he said it didn't look much yeah. under pressure. It's like a blood bank down there. Uh, the and umpire Scott McLaren, he's got a lot of things to sort out at the moment. Well, they kept on playing when Richardson was due to come off the ground. 
And the umpire's ordered him off now, and he's coming right on here. He's got a split over his eye. So you can, uh, Richardson's trying to do the right thing, I guess, by the rules of the game. I've got to get off, starts to head off, and yet play hasn't stopped. Yeah, right. the umpire actually hadn't directed play to stop. So I think uh, if you're coaching the players, you would stick with the philosophy, just play to the whistle, son. You stay out there until they tell you to get off. Well, the Tigers have got a kick, and they got this kick out of that limbo situation. And it's Dragosevic. He waits for everyone to be in their correct positions. The umpire now is happy. So the youngster, Geelong under 18s, coached by Brian Cordy, former Bulldog. Dragosevic should kick, does kick, gets the goal for the Tigers. Well, it is one area. I know players understand that they do have to come off with the blood rule. We'll just have a look at the free kick. As Dragosevic just gets in and under there, heading towards goal. And just a lazy tackle. Wasn't uh, a lot of contact there, but uh, the arm certainly was above the shoulder, so the free kick's here. But players understand they have to get off, but still you have to wait for the umpire to stop the game. There's Richo again, copping an errant hand. This is the end result. Being patched up. It was such fine contact, wasn't it? I know I thought it might have been a fingernail, but then that was a gloved hand of O'Reilly as well. Using a silencer. Down goes Killaway to Daffy. Daffy alongside the centre circle. A high one down towards half forward McManus. Bounced off his chest and goes Harding. It's tied up in there and the ball up. So Richmond irresistible at the moment. 5 2 to a goal. Eight and a half minutes remaining till quarter time. Overcast day. Chance of some rain later. The conditions at the moment pretty good for footy. Otten's a rising star. Battles with Bandy. Fell at their feet. Fletcher dragged down. Held to him. Another ball up. Just talking about Adrian Fletcher. Twice this season. 34 possessions against Adelaide and the Western Bulldogs. At the last two weeks. Some of the best form of his career. Hard working. Adrian Fletcher. Knocked down by Otten's. Taken by O'Reilly, boots it back to midfield. Knights charged at it, a bit unlucky there. Kellaway falling to the ground. Dragosevic in trouble. Hand passes back towards the middle, shipped to Bandy. Bandy, 70 metres from goal, goes looking for Michael. Was he pushed in the back? Yes, he was. McKee, the hands were there. Michael gets the free, and he'll kick from right on the 50. Clem Michael, it'll take a good kick from here. Goes in short, Brad Wirra. That was well played by Clem Michael because uh, Richmond did have the tall timber back in the goal square and it was going to have to be a great kick to get it over the top. Brad Wirra worked pretty hard. He's now picking up Matthew Knight and uh, off the half-back line. Knight's sitting on the half-back line for Richmond and was getting the ball early. Wirra's moved back onto him and, uh, and he's run well into that space and having a shot for goal. Richo's back on the ground meantime at the opposite end. There's Brad Wirra. Bending it around nicely, it's a goal. Well, John, I think it's just wonderful that they got confidence to give it to the back pocket and <laughs> give him a shot at goal, and he doesn't let him down, does he? No, he doesn't. He's done very well there. and uh, He did the job, a very similar job on Adam Uze against Melbourne, where Uze was playing half-back. Wirra went down there to pick him up and kicked two goals in the first quarter for Fremantle, set them away on their first ever win at the MCG, and he's doing the job on nights now, and... He's kicked the goal early. That will certainly make Knights think that he has to watch where Rura is going to run and not just float off too much. So the Dockers have two goals through Modra and Wira. But it's all with the Tigers. Five goals in the opening part of this quarter. Dockers from half-back. Gale really just gives the ball off too easily there. Fletcher in front position on Callaway. Back. Gale a long handball out into space. Carry from McManus in towards centre half forward. Wills is in the front spot. Rogers spoil, roving well at ground level. Wirra again getting across half forward on the left. It's an excellent kick out in front of Modra. Doesn't quite carry, but it bounces favourably for him. Back he comes. Left foot picks it up, screws it in. Couldn't quite get it up and over the contest. Force through for the one behind. That's a good effort uh, running flat out to be able to pick up the ball and get it on your boot towards goal like that. But 
well covered by the Richmond defenders there, covering the goal line and forcing it over the line. And the Richmond defence is a very solid one. Rates number seven in the competition. More often than not, if you're building a good side, that's the point you work from. Get a sound defence, the rest then will come. Knights to do the kicking in. Just short to himself, then will clear well outside the 50 to the outer side. Gales behind. Front position, Chaffee takes the mark. Comes around, uses his non-preferred right foot. Bounces in front of Broderick. Picks it up. Works with Dragosevic, trying to get through the centre of the ground. Daffy couldn't get away from Fletcher. Turned it back their way. Waterhouse on the left. They've found some space here. We're again to Bond. Here's Wills in the pocket. He's got it. Good build up that. Yeah, a lot better. A lot better use of the ball. Very clean by Fremel then. Adrian Fletcher, just great pressure in the middle of the ground. And still manages to get the ball off to a teammate in a good position. And then the rest of his teammates followed on to work the ball down very cleanly to Wills. So Andrew Wills back into some form last week in the game against the Western Bulldogs, but needs to return to being a goal scorer. It's across to the far side and just the one behind. So just the three goals this season to Andrew Wills. All singles. Whereas you look back, he does have bags of five in, in his history book. Needs one here this afternoon for the Dockers. Campbell pinpoints it. Andrew Kellaway close to the boundary line. Keeps going immediately. McKee up towards the wing. Bond arrives hurriedly. Best and fairest for the Tigers. The kick from McKee down towards half forward. Ottens appear to be held. Falls in front. This is Samson. Samson kicks inside the 50. Holland camped underneath it. Hitting the ball hard is Clement. Trying to hack his way out of there. Fletcher. Untidy handball. Harding picks it up, smothered by Chaffee, comes to Holland, Holland beautifully done, great goal, something out of nothing. Well isn't that the case, just makes the world a difference, just a, the effort to make the smother there, you don't worry about trying to get a possession yourself, just put your body under pressure and get it over the boot and you create a goal for your team, it's sensational football. Certainly your teammates appreciate that when they know that uh, you've done the hard work, created a goal, and you're the one who'll get the pat on the back from your teammates. And Good kick by Holland, off uh, only one or two steps. It's the ball spilled out to him and he's threaded it through. So Mark Chaffee at half forward doing the smothering, allowing the Tigers to get their sixth goal on the board. Chaffee already with four disposals has been busy. Fletcher, equally so, that's six for him. Now it comes on out towards half forward for the Dockers again. The fly, no completed mark, down to Wills. Trying to find the handle on the foot, he can't. It runs over the boundary line, out of bounds, half forward flank. Terry, the two blood rule boys had been playing on each other, Parker. Well, they've, no, they've rejoined and now the two blood rule guys, Parker and Richardson, and uh, it's quite a sight. Out at half forward, those two players are now. The ball at half forward for the Dockers. Campbell rolls, tries to stand up, can't. Waterhouse gives it to Norwich, gives it back in board to Holland. In short, over the top. Glenn Michael from the square, over the shoulder. It's a goal to the Dockers. Well, it's turning into a bit of a shootout in this first quarter. Freeman are really fighting back hard against Richmond, who have been able to score pretty freely. Every time they've gone forward, they've looked very dangerous. Freeman are fighting hard to try and stay in touch and they work that ball again very well when they get possession and they're running and using it properly they look like they're going to get themselves into a scoring position and Brodie Holland read it pretty well there could have snapped the goal himself gave it to Michael who kicked truly so the margin is 18 points next goal important here Bandy with the run, Gale with the direction, gets it down to Daffy, smothered off the boot. Gale at close quarters, Prescott, all 22 games for the Tigers last season, played 90 for them in total. The ball inside the 50, Knights to his own advantage, well played, gets it away to Rogers. Rogers didn't look though, Gale didn't mark it, plays on immediately. McManus pulls it back in short. Well, that was a compromise kick to neither of the Dockers. Eventually, Gale picks up the loose ball, kicks inside the 50. Michael. Well, inadvertently, they may have struck on something here. Michael with a chance to goal. 
about 20 metres out. It'll be his second in the space of a minute. And he really is starting to grow in stature. Uh, the more games he's playing, he's finding confidence in his own ability. That's a very strong mark. Just read the play well, kept his eyes on the ball. They're the marks that you'd like to see your big men taking, especially if they are just sitting down in the forward pocket. Become a big headache for the opposition sides. So suddenly, this could pull it back to just 12 points. Michael, goal umpire goes a long way, but it's OK. Well, that is a great goal. It just keeps Fremantle in touch. They go into quarter time break if they can uh, not let Richmond get another goal. The game's pretty tight, so they'd be happy with that. Bandy's coming off now to have a rest, and Michael goes into the rut where he has been very good as well. But uh, it looks like they're really going to rotate those big blokes through the rut today, Fremantle, and make sure that uh, they've both got plenty of run left in their legs at the end of the game. So consecutive goals to Glenn Michael. Brings the Dockers back, fighting their way back into the game in the first quarter. History has it their first quarters haven't been all that good this year. The first half of the first quarter wasn't good today, but now the second half, they're working their way back into it. Currently at half forward, the Dockers working it through. Tigers turn it back that way. Now it's at half forward for the Tigers. Platt flies. Platt goes down. Bond robes well. Palms it off towards Harding. On out wide to Gale. Getting a lot of footy on the outer side. Carries it through. The kick falling short of the mark. Returns it from Black. Gale again attacks the, his Waterhouse in front. He's got it. Yes, twice. Got it. Free kick. Mark, free kick, whatever you want. Umpire Steve McBurney was right there. It's a good kick by Gale from at 70 metres out. Spotted Waterhouse in front of goal. Just hooked the ball across his body and put it uh, just far enough in front of Waterhouse to give him a chance to take the mark. And high contact there as well. So Waterhouse, who has had mixed days in front of goal this year. His days when it's been 2-4 and 2-3. Last week it was five goals too. Today, it's 1-0. Well, hasn't it been a shootout in this first quarter? Richmond just started so well. And when a side starts like that, makes it a one-sided game early, you start to think, well, that's about it. It's, uh, it's going to be at that margin all day. But Fremantle have responded here. They've got themselves sorted out and played very well to be only six points behind, giving them a lot of confidence. But uh, I don't think they can keep up this pace all day. They want to now start to dampen down the Richmond scoring opportunities. So it seems the Tigers have squandered a great start. Clive Waterhouse, 22 goals for the season. Terry mentioned five last week, equaling his career high. Up goes Michael. Daffy, was he pushed in the back? No free kick. Dragosevic was looking up but lost the footy. Now he grabs it his second time. Kicks down towards the attacking 50 in front. Broderick taken over the shoulder. He'll get the free. Paul Broderick forward of the wing. No doubting a free kick there. Short towards Holland. Awkward half volley. Fletcher could have been held, trying to crash his way out. Clement stubs it towards the boundary line. Holland tries to hook it back, not in time. Boundary throw in about 60 metres out from Richmond's attacking goal. Holland does very well here, doesn't he? I mean, he just plays it to the nth degree. The umpire may have assumed just a touch. Ottens held on too early, no free kick. McManus over the ball. Kellaway over him and the bounce inside the 50 now for the Tigers 6-2 to 5-2 the Dockers have done well in trouble early Richo's in form but in the last 10 minutes it hasn't been down there Otten's in front Michael over the top the pedigree great on both sides there and the ball is out of bounds a boundary throw in 55 metres out from goal off comes Chaffee Harrison is on. Meanwhile, boundary throw in. Ottens and Michael again. Plenty of space at the back. Doc is a bit lucky there. Norrish kicking it towards centre field. Black tries to help it on its way. Wills is outnumbered. Spills across to Rogers. Relayed free kick, is it? It is a relay free kick. Andrew Ship made some high contact to Rogers. The umpire's deemed an arch to kick the ball. So Wayne Campbell to take it. We're under a minute of play left. 
Just six points of difference. The Dockers have charged back at Richmond, who got away to the flying start. In the pocket, can Holland keep this one in? No, he can't. <laughs> umpire right on the spot. Interesting duel between those two, Holland and the, and the boundary umpire. Tag. Is, and, uh, do you think the Fremantle players are aware of Richardson here? <laughs> Three of them. <laughs> you, know, you, can't, a... you can't afford to do that, can you? You can't all the time, no. They soon wake up the fact that uh, by triple teaming Richardson leaves other players free. Dockers have kicked five of the last seven goals of the match and they repel the Tigers right on the last line of defence. McManus comes in short to Brody Holland, feeds on off to the run of Parker, off he goes as the job on Richardson will exploit it going all the way down the outer side, run out of support, here's the kick to half forward, no one there. That's a terrible kick. Gale just sitting back there on his own, and he was the man picked out by Parker. He gives it to Bowden. The long handball goes on out wide to Tivendale. Back towards Harrison, who come off the interchange bench to go on to Mark Gale. Made his intentions clear as soon as he got out there. Tigers at half forward. Dockers holding. They've held. They've held. They have worked their way right back into the game. Richmond kicked the first four goals and raced out to a 26-point lead. But the Dockers manfully and workmanlike have got back into the game and six points is the difference. The game has taken its toll on a few players, about three or four off with a blood rule, and Richo gets involved in a bit of this, needs to get out of that, I think. We saw him dragged off the ground against Geelong nine days ago. Meantime, Jeff Geeshan with a bit on his mind. As Terry said, they got the flying start, but then we've seen the Dockers, through persistence, work their way back into it. The margin at quarter time, the Tigers by six points. Quarter time, Fremantle 5-2, trail the Tigers 6-2. The margin six points, then Michael has booted two for Fremantle, and two apiece to Richardson and Holland for the Tigers. Seven Sport hope you're enjoying this match as part of the 1999 Coca-Cola AFL Premiership season. Interesting first term, that one. I mean, the Tigers got this start. Full credit to the Dockers, the way they worked their way back. Yeah, they did, and, and now the game will settle into what we say is a normal game. Bit of a shootout in the first quarter, six goals to five. That won't happen every quarter. Both teams will go a lot tighter now. They know the matchups, and uh, it'll be a real slog from here. But Fremantle 
did well to work their way back into it. Yeah, there was early aggression in the game, wasn't there? But I think that's emotional aggression, that. What we'll see now, as you say, will tighten up and will become much more controlled, a team effort of putting pressure on all uh, the other forward line in order that they have to get goals under extreme hard work. Let's go down to Adrian Barrich. Thanks, Dennis. Yes, we have Alan Joyce, assistant coach. Joyce, he must have been happy with the first 15 minutes anyway. Yeah, the first 15 minutes was good. You know, our accountability across the centre, particularly in the last 15 minutes, was uh, questionable, I suppose, and that's where they got in front of us. Is that what happened? You just let them run right? Well, in the centre, yeah. They, you know, our accountability early was terrific and our pressure was great, but the last 15 minutes, we've just got to get back to that accountability. Persevering with the tall forward line, the three big tall? Yeah, it worked well in the first 15 minutes, and uh, Richardson had what, four or five marks in that first period and kicked a couple of goals, so we'll get back to that. Brilliant, mate. Thank Good you. luck. Well, yeah, thanks, Barra. And Matthew Richardson already in trouble. The boundary umpire going up to check the for blood there. So he's going to have to keep an eye... Well, may I say, he'd have to keep an eye on that. Yes, like circling sharks. Barra talking with Alan Joyce, a well-known face here in WA, like Jeff Geeshan. He coached in the local competition. He's from Adelaide, Perth, with some success. Geeshan, of course, with West Perth. Start of the second term. Very much up for grabs, this one. Gale goes up and thumps it down. Harrison's over the ball. Over the top of him comes Gale, who was so good in the opening term. Ten possessions to Mark Gale. Nick Daffy's got eight. Bounce alongside the centre circle. Umpire McBurney puts it down. Bandy knocks it back towards centre half back. Harding very busy as well to start the game. His ninth possession there. It's tied up. And a bounce almost on the line of the square as Michael Gale gets up last. Bounce favours Bandy. Gale came hard. Kellaway knocks it. Goldwood. Holland feeds it off. Dragosevic inside the centre square. Kicks wide. Richardson has to stretch. Couldn't hang on. He was overcommitted. He's on the ground now. O'Reilly close to the line. McManus kept it in. Well, centimetres in that. McManus comes back to the middle. Holland takes on a tackler. His namesake. But it was friendly. Got it to McManus across the ground. Harding. Drops the mark, he's at right half back. Bond is moving up the ground for him. Awkward half volley, couldn't control it. Sampson stood up in the tackle, got it across to Proctor. Proctor back to Sampson. Sampson punishes the defence for their mistake and goes to Watton's inside the 50. Too many possessions by Fremantle then. They ran the ball from one side of the ground to the other. And uh, then there was a turnover and they still weren't far enough away from that danger zone to look after themselves Richmond once they cause that turnover one kick back and they're having another shot at goal Brad Ottens number five memories of Neville Crowe the second man taken in the 97 draft Brad Ottens very promising young player difficult kick this one he's bending it back it's not a bad effort that's a terrific kick it's a goal well, that does punish you, doesn't it? Fremantle had plenty of the ball. So they tried to run it out of their back line. Because McManus, who did well to keep it in, from going out of bounds, but then he took off across the ground, ran the ball right across, and then the turnover came, and Fremantle really not far enough away from their opposition goal. A quick turnaround. As Richardson comes off again, that uh, blood seeping through the, seeping through the bandage, and he'll have to come off again. So this is the real challenge for the Richmond doctor. Can he, can he stem the blood coming from uh, Matthew Richardson? This was the incident in the first quarter. The left hand there of Stephen O'Reilly flipping Richardson across that left eye. So he's off and this can be a very frustrating time for Matthew Richardson, for Jeff Geeshan in the coach's box and for the doctor. McKee is the player to come back on, Steve McKee. Holland. No, the umpires didn't wait until he got into position, Dennis. No. That's uh, an error on their behalf. They must do that. Meanwhile, the Dockers get their chance. Fletcher to Bandy from outside 50. Michael again, he's got it. Wastes no time, Michael. Excellent. To Bandy. Takes one step, two steps, kicks a goal. Dockers are back. 
Well, it started the same way as the first quarter. A bit of a shootout. A goal apiece, but Clem Michael proving a bit of a headache up forward. Richmond went in with the tall forward line. Freeman have answered it by sneaking up Clem Michael into the forward pocket. He's taken a couple of strong marks to himself and sets up one here. The big Daniel Bandy. That's a pretty important goal for Freeman. They, don't, they want to stay right in touch. Well, the Tigers seriously disadvantaged by that call on the blood rule. McKee is now on Michael. Michael kicked the last goal. McKee came on for Richardson. Now, they've really got to sort this out. McKee had just walked through the interchange gates. Admittedly, he was walking, but the umpire bounced the ball. He does it again, just to prove that he can do it. It's slapped out wide. Proctor leads in the race. It was a Tivendale. Tivendale is dragged down. Plenty of support, but didn't get the ball to any of it. Holland has it across the body. Tippendale once more. Left footer hard against the line. Down towards half forward. Holland. Awkward half volley. Ricochets to Holland. Comes across to Prescott. I know it's confusing. Prescott through the centre square. Spears the pass into Waterhouse. Clive's got it. Right at the square. The attacking side of centre. Bandy wants it out wide. He comes to Bandy. And Bandy, 55 metres out, decides oh, to take up. on Gale. Very nimble. The kick not so flash. Popped across the line by Joel Bowden. There was a McKee down there. Both of them in the square. McKee got a fist on it, so behind. It was almost the perfect plan, wasn't it? Got around, took on Gale, but uh, didn't get enough purchase on the kick, get enough height to get it over those guys in the goal line. So Daniel Bandy full of confidence, and why not? Best on ground display against Melbourne two weeks ago in the win. A couple of goals last week against Adelaide. He has another go at him now. He missed McKee. Big strong mark. Country Victoria. Up he goes. Campbell finds Richardson. Parker loses a boot. Richardson handballs off towards Daffy. He kicks like he always does into half forward. Black couldn't get the ball. It's a boundary throw in. Big mark by McKee back there, but I don't think Brennan Gale appreciated it. The knee right into his hip. Brennan Gale approaching 31 years of age. McKee is just 20 years of age. Passing of the guard is some of the passing of the ball by the doctors at half back. O'Reilly and Bond to half forward front position. Ship gets a free kick. Oh, he worked very well there to get in front and earn the free kick. On the right tack, out to the path now, Prescott. Over the top of the Waterhouse. He must kick these goals. He's inside 50. He chips at it when he should have thumped it. But Michael's got it. Swings around. Looks for goal number three. He's got it. He's the catalyst of the return. Well, he certainly is. Clint Michael really stood up and has added a lot to Fremantle over the last month. The more he's got better, the better Fremantle have looked. Daniel Bandy also feeling the help from Michael. With, the, with his workload, but again, they just worked it forward. Wasn't a good kick by Waterhouse, was going for goal. Clem Michael kept his eye on the ball, took a strong grab, good enough to run around and bang it through for another goal. Keep Freeman right up there in front now. Clem Michael, nice snap, three goals. And shades of the game against Geelong. Fremantle very slow out of the blocks that day. Looked almost a mismatch, and then suddenly they came storming back. Down goes Harrison. He's getting a free kick. Fletcher in his back. Harrison wasting no time. Kicks inside the 50, going to Richardson. Cleared him. Runs loose behind. Parker close to the boundary line. Down he goes. Was pushed in the back by Sampson. He'll get the free kick. Parker wasting no time to McManus. Men on towards the middle. One of them is Gale. Gale has it now. Thought about a hand pass. Decides against that. Runs away from half back. Kicks to half forward. Taken brilliantly by Wills on the half volley. Feeds it out wide to Bandy. Causing Michael Gale a few problems. Spears the pass oh, into the Magnificent football. One end of the ground to the other by the Fremantle Dockers. Yeah, that was sensational footy. And Daniel Bandy is starting to cause some headaches. The big Brendan Gale. He is running into space. Gale's caught. He wants to push back in front of Modra when he gets the opportunity. But the Dockers, as we said, they've learnt from the way that Scotty Wine played them last week. And they are looking more for Bandy, who's finding the space. And it's really making Gale think now whether to man up Bandy or to drop in the hole in front of Modra. 
on that occasion, he wasn't close enough to Bandy and then couldn't get back in front of the hole. Tony Modra going at his second goal. From 45 metres out, good looking effort. I think it's okay, it is. No. Well, that's amazing. Was that? That is, uh, it looked like a goal. No but, doubt. Uh, we're, directly, we're directly behind it. The Dockers were celebrating. I don't think it was close. Watch this again. It didn't look like it went the other side of the post at any stage. No. Still, back at the ball game. Campbell down towards half forward. Missed by Richardson. At the back, Holland. Nicely done. Feeds it back to Daffy. Daffy about 65 metres out. Breaks a tackle. Throws the ball on the boot. But the pressure forced the error. But the propped his head. Taken by McManus. Well, remarkable at the other end of the ground as the kick goes towards the outer side. Bandy. There was no doubt in the Dockers' minds. It seems spontaneous. O'Reilly runs around the outer side. Feeds it to Wills. But Modra's kick was a goal. And certainly we're directly behind the kick. And it didn't seem to get out of the line of the goals at any stage. Wills towards half forward. Ship missed it. Taken by Knights. And ships in the night. He gets it across to Bowden. Down towards half forward. And the mark is held by Plapp. So Plapp on the outer side way. Looking for Richardson. There's the lead, it's wide, the Dockers are getting back, Richardson comes hard, takes the mark. Well, they stretch him, the Tigers do, don't they? They make him work for him, <laughs> Terry, but that's where he'd rather them out in front, so he has to use that pace that he has got to stretch and make it, rather than kicking it up too high and giving the backman a chance to get a run and spoil it. But he uh, really works hard for his, his kicks, does uh, Richardson. That's mark number seven to Richardson. Now down at this end, from about 48 metres out, he leans back on it. Goal umpire is going to give them a goal at this end. So the Dockers miss out at one end, the Tigers go down and get it. Yeah, doesn't that make a huge difference? So close Fremantle to kicking away to a handy lead after they've trailed by a fair bit at times in the first quarter to Rich, Richmond working the ball back down the other end of the ground and replying with a goal so quickly. Richardson, who's been off and off, off and on the ground, trying to get his rhythm going again. He's back out there now and looking dangerous again. Great kick by Matthew Richardson. Meanwhile, at the other end of the ground, while Richardson was kicking that goal, Tony Modra is certainly trying to help the goal umpire over the last one at the Subiaco end. Ah, oh, gee, it's all happening at Subi. Twelve and a half minutes till half time. Big swing right there. Richmond 8 2. The dock is 7 4. Michael knocks it down. Plenty of Tigers around the ball. Eventually they work it out. Daffy got it to Campbell. Dragon Civic initially got the ball across to Daffy. Now Harrison, McKee, Dragon Civic. The hand pass not good for him though. He tried to get back in the action, but it was a wayward handball. Now Bandy gets it from Holland. Boots it out towards the wing. Daffy did well. Came back strongly on Norris. Norris is hanging on. Daffy will get the free kick. Nick Daffy. Averaging 25 possessions a game this season. Seventh best in the AFL. Averaged 24 last year. 16 and 97. 18 and 96. So by any standards, it's a stellar year. Down towards half forward. Richardson gave a contest. Sampson hurriedly inside the 50. Going back is Bandy to Harding. Harding the high ball, back towards half back and Bond. Campbell gave a contest. Bond slaps it on, picked up by Proctor. Well, they're juggling it in there. Gale slapped it away, only as far as Campbell. Campbell sends the Tigers back into their forward line. Richardson was up, knocked away by Parker. Kellaway trapped it pretty well to the advantage of Ottens. Strong tackle got him down. It spills wide. This is Rogers. 60 metres from the Tigers' goal. Pulls it back across his body. Taylor made for Bandy, who misjudged it in flight. Now a chance for Samson. Samson goes across to Richardson. He's booted three. Impossible angle. Didn't miss by much, but there were two men loose on the kickoff line. Gale takes the mark. Goal umpire's called it back, Dennis. He said it's either the ball had gone across the line or Gale stepped back over the line with the ball. I think the goal umpire's going to signal a point. Tony Modra might run the length of the ground here to help. Explain that to me. What is it, a behind? Yes, OK. A delayed reaction, but hopefully they got it right. 
I'll sit with hopefully two <laughs> tennis because I am absolutely confused as to what happened there. But then again, so here's the kick across here. Clearly a marked, well, so the goal umpire is saying that that was marked over the goal yeah. line, so inaccuracy, one behind to the Tigers. Dockers have got it out to the outer wing. <laughs> and then another official incurring the wrath of the crowd here. This time it's the boundary umpire. And Terry, it's all happening down on the bench too. Uh, Brendan Gale has done his thigh, badly called thigh, right hip area and thigh, and will miss at least the next 10 or 15 minutes of the game. So it's the walking wounded and much is being asked of the umpires. They need to be on their metal here this afternoon because the stakes are high. Five points the difference. Richmond got out to the flying start and the Dockers working their way back into it. Clem Michael, three goals. He's been the man in the forward line. Umpire Scott McLaren in charge in there. Pharmacist from Victoria. He'll keep the chemistry right. Bounced. Ottens drops it down. He lets it all go to the umpire. Prescott gets the foot to the ball, wobbles it into the centre square. Waterhouse charges at it, comes back a second time. Ship wor works with Waterhouse, and away he goes on the right foot. Chips it on out wide. Wera. Umpire wants it back. It's a throw. Well, Dennis, let's see whether you can get it going. Here's Kellaway down towards half forward. The umpire's friend, though. Missed by Clement down there. Harding. Didn't appear to have the ball. Play goes on. Clement breaks away. Prescott sweeping hand pass to Gale. Had the check. Chaffee did well. Applied good pressure. Comes to Bandy. Bandy over the top to Harding. Bit to like about this game. Harding punches it down towards half forward and ship. 70 metres from goal. Prescott running to space. I'd kick it in front of him, ship. Well, not a very good kick. It goes down towards Modra. Prescott runs on, slaps at Goldwood. Run hard, Back comes Tony. Knights. Modra trying to cut off the escape valve there. Harrison, terrible kick. Prescott kept his head, knocks it across to Gale deep in the pocket. Gale bends it back. Wills is down there, and somehow Wills took the mark simply by standing his ground. Well, that was good football by both sides really under pressure. Other side really getting a lot of clean football in here. Harrison feeling the pressure trying to rush it onto his boot. And then here, another fumble by Prescott, but had the sense to knock the ball out to Gale, who had a little bit of space. And a good kick by Gale, setting it up at the top of the goal square. Wills kept his eyes on it and took a good mark. The goal here and the Dockers will be back in front by a point. Andrew Wills, 20 metres out. Will wait. Yes, a goal. Well, that is a good goal by Freeman. Oh, they worked pretty hard to get that one on the board. They're still just trying to get their setups right. As Clem Michaels got onto the ball to take the ruck. Daniel Bandy's dropping back into the hole at centre half back. McKee now taking the ruck because Brendan Gale got that bad cork into his hip. McKee was the one who gave it to him. That's one way to get yourself back onto the ball. <laughs> Richmond kicked the first four goals of the game but of the last 12 goals eight of those have been to the Dockers Michael in the centre bounce Drag Sevich dragged off the ball but gets his foot to it kicks to half forward Bond couldn't take the mark at half back the Dockers work at McManus under pressure from Sampson can't get it away it was a fling through McManus after he had been just possessed of the footy. McManus out to Bandy. Disposal number 14 to Daniel Bandy. Being very creative and an excellent kick again to Waterhouse. Taken in the hands by Clive. The little chip kick now to Norwich. He can run on. There is no one in front of him. Callaway chases. Norwich settles. Norwich goals. The Dockers keep going. Well, they're using the ball so much better now. Again, it was Daniel Bandy who was finding space. He's playing that loose man, a kick behind the play, and I think Richmond are going to have to address that. It's like they might be sending Harrison back down now to man him up because he is finding plenty of space. And Dockers players obviously directed to look for him and getting the ball to him on so many occasions, and he really is setting it up. But James Clement, good play back there as well, is finished off by Norrish.
Nine four eight three. Over eight minutes till half time. McKee and Michael. Michael reaching over the top, knocks it down. Daffy, the hurried kick away. Lunging mark is taken by Sampson. Good effort there. That lunge took him inside the centre square. Kicks for space. Platt comes on the lead. He'll mark this one about 40 metres out. Nicely worked. Justin Platt. McKee drifting back to the square. Richo's down there. Ottens is down there. Interesting trio. They're the only three within 40 metres of goal. All of them giants. So obviously Platt should get the distance. That's their thinking. So there's no crummery, and although Hollands is drifting down as I speak. Platt. Good looking effort. That's a beautiful kick. Goal for the Tigers. That was a great kick there. Justin Platt, good lead and a good kick out in front of him. He led hard and strong, found plenty of space and finished off with a good kick for goal. But both sides playing loose men in defence. It's Holland, Ben Holland for Richmond and Daniel Bandy who was slipping back for Fremantle. But Bandy's now picked up by Harrison, which means that James Clement is now the spare man for Fremantle. But interesting because they're both still getting plenty of goals on the board. Justin Platt becomes Richmond's sixth goal scorer. And he's important at that end of the ground. Last year he was 14 goals in his eight games. Had a bag of five and four. Needs more opportunities this afternoon. Here comes one towards him now. Dragosevic goes to Richardson. Excellent kick on the left foot by the young player. Richardson wastes no time. Squares it to centre half forward. Sun in the eyes of the players. But that doesn't stop Brody Holland. At half back, he's been very good. On out wide now, Prescott through half forward to Bandy. Excellent hands from Bandy. The run from Fletcher, the kick on the left. Modra traps it with the right hand, drops it down in front of himself. Fletcher comes in, handballs on out wide. Ship stands, delivers to the top of the square. Wills is behind. Spoil was excellent by the Tigers. Pushes towards the line. Wills first, Rogers second. Boundary line wins. Bandy's killing them, isn't he? 15 possessions now for the big man. And the... He's playing it well. He's playing that loose man in defence and the Tigers trying to work out how to match him up. They've now moved McKee to, to run directly with him. Michael could have got a free kick in the ruck duel from the front position. It's walked towards the boundary line. It'll be done again. Terry, another reason the Dockers are doing very well this quarter they up kicking against the breeze. Richmond has this breeze and it's really fresh and I reckon it's worth two or three goals. And the best side to score is the far side. That's why Richmond keeps going to that side. Okay, so right in front of Andrew Barry, just throwing in. Waterhouse hands it out towards Holland. In front, Modra, he's got it. 30 metres out directly in front. Holland was very good for the Dockers. The theory is just get the ball free, not necessarily your body free. And when it goes in quick, sometimes you catch the defence out. Definitely with an uh, explosive player like Tony Modra up there, who is so good in those tight one-on-one -on -one situations. When the ball comes in quick, he is at his best. Brody Holland, quick thinking there, just get it on his boot while it's still open up forward for Modra to have his best chance, and he didn't let him down. Has 48 goals for the season from directly in front. Should kick it. That's as straight as a die. Modra gets his second. And the Dockers now stretch it out. Seven points is the difference. A lot better play by Fremantle. We've talked about that loose man. Richmond are trying to get their matchups right. They're still playing Holland. Ben Holland back loose in their defence. McKee takes a ruck knock against Clem Michael. That leaves Daniel Bandy free. And he is carving them up at the moment. They try and man up after the bounce down, but they have to look hard at Bandy. Two goals for Teddy Madra. He's had some big days against the Tigers as a crow, but a 23 goals against them in 93 in just two games. <laughs> Think about that. 10 and 13. One down by Michael. Fletcher had it, then lost it. The scramble develops and the ball up. Last man up. 
is Ashley Prescott, who's got a bit to say to a couple of his former teammates. In the heat of battle, but very popular member of the Tigers. Just talking to him pre-season, a lot of close friends there, and they've maintained that relationship. Spills wide, here's kick it on the ground, storming through towards Harford. Cleared bandy, picked up by Wills to ship. Brilliantly done into the path of Holland. Heard the voice of Clive. Here's Waterhouse, 35 metres out. Whoops, straight up in the air. Rogers stood his ground, took the mark, not 10. Pretty tough call. Play goes on. Waterhouse got it across to Norwich. Hand passes back along the 50. Kickett's got it now. Kickett puts it up towards Modra. Modra, Gaspar. Back goes Rogers. Modra almost. Desperately, Rogers across the line for a behind. It almost stuck. It almost did, didn't he? He's so good in that situation, Tony Modra. One on one, the ball doesn't have to come into his favour. He works his body so hard against his opposition to give himself the best chance and just couldn't finish it off that time. Rogers did well to get it across the line. Sunday football from Subiaco. The Dockers 10 5, Richmond 9 3. It's the Dockers who have got everything running at the moment. Holland, Ben Holland for the Tigers towards the wing. Over the top, O'Reilly cleaning up for the Dockers. Fletcher racking up possessions. Disposal number 12 to Holland, to Brody Holland from the Dockers to half forward. Pressure was very good from Ship. Gets it down to ground level. Bowden, left footer, cleans up for the Tigers. Wayne Campbell stretches, takes the mark. Moves on to Chaffee. Looking downfield. Looking for the targets. Pushing, shoving. Broderick can't take it. Kick it very good from behind. Start of the game on the interchange bench. Dale kick it. His kick is not a good one. No, very lazy kick by a kick at that time, Terry. Clay Sampson makes him pay. Long to the square. Richardson behind two. Gets a second go. Can't get foot to the ball. Dockers have numbers. Harding goes for the safety of it all. One behind. Well, a desperate play by Fremantle captain Chris Bond just diving himself as Richardson got himself into a position to soccer the ball through. Chris Bond saw the danger. We'll see the replay here. Watch Chris Bond come flying through, just through his body onto the boot of Richardson. Great play by the captain. 26 minutes gone in the second quarter. Zubiaco. Clock ticks down. Dale kick it with the ball. Runner up best and fairest at the club in 95 96. Won it in 97. Starts today on the interchange bench. James Clement. So at quarter time, Richmond led by six points. Jumped out of the blocks. Dockers worked it back to six. Now it's a seven point lead to the Dockers. Clement. Tosses it up high towards the wing. Harrison flies for the Tigers. It gets to ground level. Norwich keeps it in. Bowden on the left foot. Under pressure from Fletcher. Out on the full. And according to the bound round, Pyre only went about half a metre before it went out of bounds on the full. It went straight off his boot out of bounds, which is a handy 30 metres there for Freeman. I'll let them have to go back. Now they're going to try and find some space up forward, kicking in front of a leading player. Under three minutes of play. Andrew Wills deliberately kicks high. Modra, I have to make the contest. It's all Tigers. Callaway thumps it away. Andrew Callaway, that is. Good punch by Andrew Callaway there, just to get the ball away from that danger area and straight out of bounds. I'd like to suggest that kick to kick in the Callaway family used to be just spoiling. Wasn't too much marking. Duncan and Andrew, what fine defenders they are for the Tigers. They're going to have to come to the goods here this afternoon. Clement at ground level. Can't get it out. Hard tackling. That's Duncan Callaway. He's too high on ship. And Andrew Ship really is adding something to that Freeman on forward line. He just gets hard around the football, contests everything that comes his way, and when he gets his hands on it, generally uses it well. Ship inside the 50. Michael was up. No mark. Knights couldn't control it. Gaspar. Brilliant smother by Bond. It ricochets back towards full forward. Wills picks it up. Opportunistic goal, it's a beauty. Well, they're jumping and celebrating at Subiaco. Oh, that's a... Bushy, we just saw Chris Bond save dive the on the ball, save one at one yeah. end, do exactly the same at the other and get one. He's created one, so 
two-goal turnaround just by throwing his body over the boot of an opposition player by Chris Bond. And that is uh, great work by that player. And another goal created by a smother. We saw one Richmond get one in the first quarter. And that is just the value of that hard play. Andrew Wills has two goals in this second quarter, but this one directly as a result of the work of his skipper, Chris Bond. The smother on the boot, ball rebounds back, and the opportunistic Wills takes hold of it and goals. Dockers now out to 13 points in front. Richmond have moved Matthew Knights into the centre. Ottens does the ruck work, just pushes on down towards Fletcher. Dockers quickly out of the hands. Daffy puts it back from where it came. Fletcher is still there, can't get out. Umpire Steve McBurney comes in to bounce the ball. Emergency umpire out talking to uh, Brody Holland, the youngest player for the Dockers, talking to Paul Broderick, the oldest for the Tigers. To space. The foot race is on. Coming from everywhere, Holland for the Tigers, works to Campbell, back to Knights in the centre as John Warsfold just picked up, feeds on out to the run of Calloway, Andrew Calloway kicks to half forward, Richardson's the only target taken out of it there, well by O'Reilly, just enough to unbalance the full forward, wins the spoil and gets a boundary throw in, out of sight for the Dockers. Richo, under pressure now. His best look. A minute and 11 seconds to go. Bandy stepped aside actually. Fletcher came in, took clean possession. Hollands almost. Bandy battles on. It's in there somewhere. Harrison going nowhere. Fletcher picked his pocket across to Harding. Harding's been good. Breaks away. Kicks around the outer side. Dying seconds of the term. Here's a chance for the Dockers. Norris goes looking for Waterhouse and hit him. Waterhouse forward at the wing, where's Modra? Indicating he wants it high. Well, it'll take a good kick to get it to him. Clive, with the clock running down, we're down to 35 seconds. Not much happening up ahead, so Waterhouse launches one. Modra couldn't get in the contest. Here's a chance for Holland, didn't bounce right for him. Holland was with him. They've been in close attendance all day. Ship went down. Picked up down there by Rogers, who kicks it high back towards halfback. Knights 50-50 ball collided with Wirra. In goes Black, comes to Wirra, hand passes to Bandy. Bandy is centering kick, dying seconds of the term. Bowden can't control it, played it pretty well though. Knocked it back to Campbell to Rogers, and Rogers heads for the other side boundary line. And the danger has passed for the Tigers. Well done, Siren. Half time. And Freeman are really putting the Tigers under a lot of pressure there. Not long to go in that uh, quarter, and if they had have pitched another goal there, they would have gone into half time very, very confident. But desperate play by the Tigers again to hold them out. And gee, it's been a good, good first half. Very yep. good. I mean, a six goal, three quarters to Freeman it equals their best quarter score for the year. Bandy has been the one that's really got them going. There's no doubt. There's Bond. He's been inspirational as a skipper. Not all that classy, but by G's hard at the footy. Doubleheader Sunday. If you like your footy, free, fl free flowing and plenty of running. This is the place to be. Half time. The Dockers lead. Look at that sky, Subiaco Oval, double-headed Sunday here from Subiaco Oval indeed, enjoying this one too, Fremantle in front at halftime after they trailed by six points at quarter time, they lead now by 13, Clem Michael on the forward line, 
certainly made his presence felt. He's put at three goals. Modra's got two. So too Wills, that last one, an absolute gem. And Matthew Richardson, who started so well, has got three. Ben Holland has booted two goals for the Tigers. So it's the Dockers by 13 points. Well, back in round 10, Tony Lockett reached a milestone. If you'd like a memento, here's your chance. It's Plugger 1300. There's the number to call. 1-800-035-665. 1-800-035-665. Relive the moment. Relive the career of Tony Lockett. And speaking of the Sydney Swans, going into this afternoon's game against Brisbane, they'd won six of their last seven. Here are some highlights now from the SCG. Kennedy takes the front position, Voss is there. Quick snap, he's got it. Hard taken here by Russell. Here's a chance, Ross has got it. 35 metres out, Goods runs into the open goal. Banks it through. Crouch was very, very good. Kelly on hands and knees, rockets the ball to Carey, finds Fosdyke, 35 metres out, the young man has got it. Ayaka Madison opens up to Kennedy. He can rocket the ball to Justin Lippage. Here to the centre square. Here comes Lepper. Runs to 50. Unloads. Gives it both barrels and kicks a goal. And uh, we, see, we see Crouch now tag and black. Gee, problems here. Malloy went through Luff's legs and Malloy just kicks a goal. To Power. Power to Ashcroft. Hurled up and got it to Lappin. Lappin to McRae. Wonderful running goal by the Lions. The Swans keep on coming. Leppage had it, lost it. Here's a chance, O'Loughlin. He's got it. <laughs> Wobbly old floater. Dunkley goes to ground. Oh, Lappin, this will be a soft one. Runs the full measure and delivers it. Interesting ball to full forward. Lockin couldn't quite hold it. Barry held up. Back to Saddington. Left foot goal. Oh, good stuff. Now they're going to be closer. Got Lewis going the wrong way, and then belts it hard and low. Malloy was strong, really held it. Handball was good. Black terrific to Akamatis. That's the ball game, surely. Big effort, that one by the Lions. Running away with it, as you can see, winning by 35 points. 2013 to 15 8. They improved their record to 8 and 5. Tony Lockett put it four goals this afternoon. He's got 40 for the season. After the game, no doubt Lee Matthews was delighted with the performance of his Brisbane Lions. Oh, well, I mean, consistently, I mean, we, you know, there's three teams that have cleared out little and they're on 10-3. We'd love to be on 10-3, but as it is, we're 8-5, we're so we're going OK, but we're not going better than anybody else. Consistency in general terms, we've been pretty good because the games we've lost, we've only lost by, I think, three go two, three goals. So we, we've actually, every game we've played, we've probably been a winning chance. So the consistency level has been pretty good, really. So the Lions' big improvers and Sydney drop back to be 7 and 6. Half time here, Sunday footy at Subiaco Oval. The Dockers lead by 13 points. Back with more right after this. The Tigers put at the opening four goals of this one, but the Dockers have come storming back half time at Subiaco Oval. It's 11 5 71 to 9 4 58. Time now for a Mitsubishi moment. Let's go back to the year of 1981. Hardly a waste of time. One of the most controversial umpiring decisions of the 80s, the day Mike Fitzpatrick was penalised for time wasting. He's taking it off, he's been wasting time. Well, what a gutsy umpiring decision. Carlton had all but won this crucial game against the Bombers, but that was the turning point. Mike's got to take that to his grave, doesn't he? <laughs> the Bombers would climb out of the grave. A six goal last quarter with Danaher kicking three gave them an improbable one point win. For Danaher, now the coach at Melbourne, it would be his greatest moment in football. A week after I'd done my knee and, and really didn't play much footy after that. Obviously I looked back and that was a highlight in my career. Neil Danaher, another Mitsubishi memorable moment. Well, both Melbourne and Adelaide have won five games this season. They're fast running out of chances. They met this afternoon at the MCG. Here's some of the action. Donald to Lee and Shelley. On the run, that's better. Beautiful kick by Andrew Lee and Shelley. 
And Schwartz on his apple chest. He's got Gurgis down in the forward line, one on one, on his own in the goal Good square. Kick, great He's found kick. them. Monster kick. Gurgis right in the goal square, a goal. Yeah, magnificent awareness there by Schwartz. This is dangerous now for the Crows right in front of goal. Cal throws himself at it. Snapped by Leoncelli for a goal. Dr. Liptak from the forward pocket. Well, if it was German now, I'm sure you'd back him, but not too sure here. Across the face. Oh, there he is again, Burton. Magnificent goal. Uze's kick, deep to full forward. Comes down the front of the oh, pack. Oh, beautiful. great stuff, McDonald. Oh, that's a terrific. If that gets in, that is great. It's Ward. Daniel Ward gets the goal. And to the centre of the ground. That's good stuff to Ward. Give it a wipe. Running past White, Lee and Chelly. He needs to drive this long. He's got a high ball down there. He's got Johnson. Johnson, the mark of the goal. <laughs> oh, Pitman. The crowd want a free kick. The play on is the call. Pittman's hand pass back into a nest of players. Chisholm has it. Sprints away. Johnson, who kicked the last goal. He can carry it almost, almost to the 50. He's got Leeds to his right. Centering ball. The Wizard in a bit of space. Can he get his first goal of the game? Neat. Oh, oh, beautiful. Well, he had good vision like Mick McGuan. And it's, it's an area that Jeff Ram, I think, has improved in his game. When he first started, it was always goal, goal, goal. Oh. Great kick by Neats. There's another goal to Neats. Didn't need to do that. Yeah, in short. And Goodwin. Just lack of concentration again. Back there. to Jarman. Well, he might kick nine. Real concentration for a goal that can't have any effect on the game. But personally, that is nine for Jarman. So how about that? Darren Jarman, nine goals, not enough. Melbourne win at the MCG, improved their record to six and seven. 16-13-109 to 13-13-91. And the Fremantle Dockers here at Subi looking for their fourth win of the season. They lead at the half by 13 points. Back talking to Adam Gilchrist right after this. Well, they were talking of showers earlier today. Absolutely no chance looking at that skyline there. Beautiful day here in Perth. Let's go down to the boundary. A man just back from a gloomier London, although the disposition of the Australian team sky high. Adam Gilchrist is talking with Adrian Barrage. Thanks, Dennis. Yes, our world, own World Cup hero. Welcome to the footy. Uh, Adam, have, has, have your feet touched the ground yet? Oh, slowly they are. It's been brilliant coming home. Little did we realise how much people were getting into it here and it's been a big thrill coming home. Tell us about Melbourne. That ticker tape parade must have been sensational. Yeah, awesome. They love their sport there. As I think they were representative of all Australian people and uh, the people that have said, oh, sleepless nights and uh, nail-biting finishes, it, it's been a great honour and a big thrill. You've got to do it all again tomorrow in Sydney. Yeah, that's right. On the midnight horror tonight, uh, over to Sydney, but uh, a big day tomorrow in Sydney. Then down to Canberra. I think uh, the Prime Minister's got something to tell us, but... Uh, no, as I say, huge thrill and uh, slowly getting some sleep caught up. A bit of a rumour, you're a Carlton fan. What's going on? Uh, Ex-Scar ex before <laughs> oh, ex I moved over here, but uh, no, it's, it's easy on a day like today. It's, it's Dockers. Uh, when the derby's on, it's a bit tougher between the two WA teams. Good on you, mate. Thanks very much for fantastic memories. Have a great day. Thanks, mate. Yes, yeah, Barra asking the hard questions, eh? <laughs> Matty Knight's limbering up the Tigers. Plenty from him in the second half. Well held last week against the Cats. 
And so far this afternoon, just eight possessions. If they're going to win this, that sort of player really needs to have an influence. McManus sitting down with Carroll. Great first half. Free running, both sides taking it to the other. A lot of goals, most enjoyable. Richardson, who started so well, didn't see much of the ball after the first 15 minutes or so. And backwards and forwards under the blood rule, he and Parker. Trust up. Matthew Richardson, he's put in three goals so far. That applause, I think, is for Adam Gilchrist. Going around the boundary. He certainly provided us with some memorable moments along with the rest of the team. Job well done. No, you're starting the footy at the moment because no one's watching. Okay. Start of the second half, 11-5, 9-4 here at Subiaco Oval. Can the Tigers get back in this one? They'll be in trouble if they lose. Ottens goes up, thumps it wide. Daffy's over the ball. Plenty of company, as you can see. Rugged in there. Fletcher at the base of the pack. A whistle and a ball up. Adrian Fletcher, as always, one of the last to get up. This time last year, was nursing a broken collarbone after a clash at Victoria Park. And that applause continues. He's got his own parade. Bandy tried to direct it down. Ottens picks it up. Hand passes out to Daffy. The players must be a bit confused by this. Daffy down towards half forward. Bond goes back. Richardson over the top. Sampson in front. Tackled there by Kickett. Dragosevic, about 80 metres from goal, gets it to Richo right on the 50. And I'd venture to say not beyond him this kick. It'll take a good one though. Holland is going down unchecked, although O'Reilly spots the danger and gets back hurriedly. So Richardson will kick from about 55. Played his 100th game against Sydney in round two. Ironic, really, because that knee injury at the SCG in 95 began a horror run for Richo. But as we said earlier, enjoying some great form at the moment, trying to bend it back across the line of behind. So the one behind brings the difference now into 12 points. Richmond have come from behind at halftime twice this year to win. They did it from 12 points down to beat Sydney and then from five down to beat Adelaide. Today the task is set at 13. It's reduced to 12. The Dockers, Bond and Weirra combining at half back to get it towards the wing position. Proctor does the spoiling on Black. Knight comes in. Holland steps through for the Dockers with Waterhouse. Back in board to Gale, feints a handball, turns, kicks long. Here's Modra, sitting back off the back, bounces for him. Gasper's right there, Modra, the soccer kick. His strike rate on that isn't bad. It's great. And that was not far away. <laughs> no, he is uncanny, a, isn't it? He is uncanny. I mean, he does weigh up the situation, there's no doubt. I think he realised that if he had picked up the ball, he was going to be under... Pressure from Gaspar, either forcing him over the boundary line or going to lay a tackle on him. Where do you so practice he's... that sort of stuff, yeah. John? Do you go up behind a curtain on training night or something, do you? No, Tony practices out here in games. So I think it's the only <laughs> time he is. He does it enough. Tigers from half back. Daffy kicks on out. Bond charges the ball down. He comes a second time. Hassel's Proctor out of possession. Proctor gets it back up again. Exchange a handball. Daffy to Samson. Into half forward. Richardson front spot. Better judgment there to Parker. Every game last year, one of nine every game this year, Parker, just a cornerstone of defence for the Dockers. And Gale, who started so very well, 10 possessions in the first quarter. Now up to 15, Harrison's his new opponent. Out of side, Fletcher. Wants to give it off, does eventually. Kick it. Runs onto it, he has space, he's running away. Modric gets a second chance. This one's on the lead. Hands couldn't take it. Wills from left to right on the right foot. Tosses it up high. One on one in the square. Can't get to a bandy. Harrison was there. Callaway towards the line. Gets a boundary throw in. 45 metres around from the goal. Dockers, when they come, they're coming quicker now. Previous years we've seen them go across board. Now Fletcher from the throw-in. 
That ain't bad at all. He works in hard and close. Now shows just a touch of class and space. Oh, he is a remarkable player in these tight situations. He's one of the players that gets around every contest. And he's just read that beautifully. Plenty of time to uh, whack it on his boot, have a look where he was heading, and he's threaded it through for a sensational goal. But he's normally the player who feeds it out to the other sensational players who finish off with the great work, but he did it on that occasion. Watch it again, Adrian Fletcher cruising in, kicking the goal. 15 possessions now, as I said in the last two games, 34 against Adelaide and the Western Bulldogs. You just wonder how he's bounced around the league as he has, given that he gets so much of the footy wherever he goes. Here's Knights kicking to half forward, poor kick, poor effort at the mark by Kickett. Redeems oh. the situation, brilliantly done. Wonderful. Whoops. Not yet, eventually gets it across to Prescott. Prescott kicking towards half forward and ship. Kellaway almost the mark. Bowden arches the back, comes away. Here's Knights getting busy all of a sudden. He's on the wing. Matthew Knights confronted. Well played by Wirra. Slaps it towards the boundary line. Not deliberate, says the umpire. Well, it was, but he wasn't going to penalise it. So boundary throw in right on the wing and bright sunshine now. Bandy and Ottens. Bandy's been very good. Ottens directs it down. Campbell ran into a dead end. Knights at close quarters to Harrison. Harrison forward at the wing. Probing kick inside the 50. Bounces off the chest of Holland down there. It had been touched. He goes after it. Claps over the ball. Still plat battling on. And his legs there. Bond is with him. And a bounce. 30 metres out directly in front the Tigers goal and they could do with a goal right here they're down by 19 points Bandy decisively Clement heads for the line equally decisive out of bounds then it's just some bench news from down here Clem Michael off the ground for the Dockers with a stiff back and for Richmond Brendan Gale is still struggling with that badly pulled thigh so Michael sits it out Clem Michael been the goal scorer has got three in the first half of the Dockers they're defending at the moment Parker does that looking to work with Prescott and Bond Prescott in there Daffy over the top of them they get it out the Tigers out here now to Richardson he needs to bend it back he can't get it around far enough one behind he's certainly getting enough football Richardson and having enough shots of goal he's missed a couple and uh, good pressure by Freeman at that time he didn't have the opportunity to bend it round enough the more he had to bend it round I think it would have been smothered by Clement so good pressure Richardson in his seventh season of league football misses the chance this gives the Dockers an opportunity but Richardson's out to make amends by himself now he's right down on centre wing gathers it oh. an inside out right foot kick towards the centre and he finds Callaway perfectly. Describe that one in the manual as well, Dennis. Campbell confidence. to Callaway. Chaffee on the run. He's the left footer. Kicks long. Platt, an unreasonable expectation of Mark. But it's a much better one in front of Watkins. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Because Platt has definitely interfered with Parker at the back. But both players out of the contest of the actual where the ball was going to be marked. And Holland too strong for Harding. Got it, the umpire just deemed that that contact behind the ball wasn't really in the could, play. Could you reasonably expect Parker to get a fist on that had he jumped though? See, that's a yep. pretty tight one. Be that as it may, Ben Holland. Two goals in the first quarter. I reckon he's wobbled one through here too. Three goals to Holland. Tigers answer the one that the Dockers got to start the third quarter. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, in that situation, the umpires have got to look for uh, for the uh, the contact that takes a player out of the uh, the contest that he's trying to get to. It's almost like a shepherd, but on this time, he was over the top of Parker, who was taken out of the contest because of the the uh, the contact from behind. So probably uh, probably did deserve a free kick there. Tigers a bit lucky, but they'll take it. Margin back to two goals now. One down by Bandy. Diving on it, Kellaway. That's Duncan. Tries to dig it out. Spills wide. 
Daffy under pressure back to Killaway scrambles it forward Campbell Ottens confronted there hasn't got the ball was taken high take your pick he's got the free plays on immediately oh, Killaway Bandy, Bandy just moved off the mark applied the tackle it came back to Ottens meantime Broderick not a good kick down towards half forward Black knocked it down Samson roving across to Rogers Rogers 70 meters out sets it up towards full forward Richardson juggled mark well done. Just too tall for Shane Parker there. It's, uh, it's an interesting matchup. Shane Parker and O'Reilly have mixed and matched between playing on Richardson today. It's Parker that's there at, uh, at this stage of the game. And in those situations, Richardson's very hard to beat. Ten marks this afternoon for Matthew Richardson. Steers it through. Back come the Tigers. He's such a dangerous player, Matthew Richardson. Comes up the ground, pushes back hard towards goal. Shane Parker can match him for agility, runs with him all the way up the ground. But when it comes in in those situations and it's one-on-one, -on -one, Richardson just has got the, the size, the strength factor over the top of him and very, very hard to beat. That's where he's taken a few marks and looked dangerous close to goal. And they do get the ball in quickly to him. Tigers back to within six. Holland and Richardson, the two key forwards, getting the goals in the third quarter. A free kick against the Dockers. Campbell from the centre bounce area, chips it into half forward. Dragosevic couldn't take the mark. Daffy's in charging with a strong tackle. Bit unlucky there, Prescott. He went hard at the foot and he was, there was some high contact here. But the umpire a little bit unsighted. Didn't see the hand across the shoulder and uh, called the ball up. Glenn Michael onto the ground. He was the one that started it all for the Dockers late in the first quarter. Off into change now in the third quarter. Ball going nowhere. Oh, so the umpire plucks one out. Umpire Steve McBurney from this near side has awarded the Richmond side a free kick. There was a bit of congestion around the football there. The umpire must have had a clear side at it. Decided that there wasn't enough of an effort to clear the ball out of the area by Prescott as he was being tackled by Richmond players. Daffy the player in there. Well, you could only deem that he didn't get it out. He didn't. He looked like he was uh, making an attempt, but deemed that he, well, he didn't so, clear it away. Nick Daffy misses badly. touch of lady luck shining upon the tigers there when she does that for your side you need to make the most of it well the free kicks are helping them a little bit at this stage the, the last two center bounces have been cleared by richmond through free kicks push them forward they just didn't capitalize on that occasion and daffy no stranger to kicking goals he's the leading goal scorer of the tigers back in 95 when he kicked 45 goals should have made better of that they keep it in their forward line though, the Tigers. Ottens takes the mark. Looks back from where it came. A lead from Plapp. Richardson's back in the square. Ottens looks. Kicks wider. Comes Richardson. Takes it on the bounce. Away he goes. Looks to take O'Reilly on. O'Reilly does very well in the chase. Enough pressure. Bond takes the interception and the free kick. So the crowd have gone and turned it back to Docker's way here. Great chase by O'Reilly. Bond, Bandy from behind, reaching over the top of Harrison. No mark. Broderick tries towards Ottens. He leaves it. And boundary throwing. Frio 78, Richmond 73. 11 minutes till three-quarter time. Boundary throw in. The attacking side of right centre wing for the Tigers. They've started the third term as they did the first. Controlling things. Bandy and Ottens fell behind them. Campbell, is he being held? Play goes on. Back to Ottens at close quarters. Trying to force a passage was Kellaway. Over the ball is Harrison. Over him is Holland. Gale reaches in. And the crowd running, holding the ball. Nothing doing. Bounce on the wing. A sea of purple. A parochial purple there. Tells the story. 7-2 so far inside the 50. Bandy 
Gets a free kick over the shoulder. Campbell wants to go. The ball will come back. So Daniel Bandy's on the wing. Quite outstanding this afternoon. Coming up to his 17th possession. Or perhaps it was for holding on. In any case, he's got the ball. Lazy kick. Kellaway. Good mark. You wouldn't have expected that. Over the top of Fletcher to Broderick, who runs inside the centre square. Probing kick to half forward. Richardson. Terrific. Ottens is running back. Richo spotted him. Puts the ball into his path. Ottens is marked 10 metres out. Well worked. Yeah, very well worked. A great mark by Richardson coming up the ground. Broderick, sensational long kick, penetrating deep into the uh, forward line for Richmond. You see the mark by Richardson. And Ottens on this occasion testing out Bandy. Took off, ran hard forward. Bandy pushing back hard, but a very good kick by Richardson. Found Ottens. Huge kick this one. Kicks a goal. The Tigers will be back in front. The margin was 13 points at half time. They've done all the attacking. The angle is set. Ottens has gone back a long way. He started well in the ruck this quarter. Opposed to Bandy, who was dominating the first half. Ottens has come on and doing a very good job. A more conventional ruckman, certainly, than Bandy. Bandy so agile and mobile for a man of that size. Ottens kicks. And I think he's got it. Good goal under pressure. He's got two now. Yeah, very good kick under pressure, and that's what he has to do. Don't let Daniel Bandy dictate terms to him by running off. If he can put pressure on Bandy going the other way, makes him think about where his opponent is. And he's done that on that occasion. Clem Michael going in to take the ruck knocks again. Bandy starting how he finished off that first half as a loose man in defence as they try and get their matchups right. Tigers were out to a 26 point lead during the first quarter. Dockers out to a 19 point lead early in this third quarter with the first goal. Now the Tigers back. One point the difference. Dockers working it hard. Kick it. As the ball, umpire will bounce. There's a bit off the ball. Umpire Steve McBurney coming in from the far end, giving the free kick here to Andrew Wills. No one on the mark, so Andy takes the invitation to play on. Kicks on the right foot towards Mike on the burst. Floats over the top, can't come back quick enough. Tigers defence, Bowden throws it on the left foot. It's up high, they camp under it. Fletcher couldn't take it in hands. Yes, he did, says the umpire. He's a good mark for his size, isn't he? Very, very strong mark overhead, Adrian Fletcher. Short, Walker, drops the mark that he should have taken. Does some tackling now, but it's all too late. The Tigers have got numbers. Free kick again. And Walker holding on too long in the tackle. So umpire Steve McBurney, I think, has been given a new whistle during the week. And he's giving it a thorough working out. So Proctor to take the free kick. From half back. Congested half forward line. Wobbles it into that area. Campbell takes a strong mark against Bond. The taller of the two, so had the advantage. Now Richardson's up there. Here's the kick. It's Platman Richardson floats over the top. Richardson does the roving. He's on the arc. Around he comes. Short kick to Broderick. Campbell on the burst, the square. Plap has to do it against a pair of Dockers. Harding does very well with a backhand fist to the outer side. Ben Holland wrapped up in the Clement tackle. You don't get away from him, Norwich, back, Bandy forward, Clement again, they need a kick here, Dragas Savage taken down in the tackle by Holland and a boundary throw in. I think in the end the Dockers will be happy to have got that. I think so. Tigers by a point. Real entertaining game this one. Boundary throw in, out of side, Holland and Bandy. Bandy worked in front. Play on's the call, it was going to be a Tiger free and now... And the ball was running towards the boundary line. I think it will come back. And Kellaway will get this kick. There was no advantage there. So good umpiring. Kellaway. About 75 metres from goal. Goes looking for Richardson. His confidence is sky high. Full chested out he comes. Steaming out. He's taken this mark. And a very sharp angle. 
And Dennis, that's the thing you acknowledge about Bandy's game. He's getting back so at least Richardson hasn't got that front lead to go to. He's pushing him out as wide as he possibly can. 12 marks now for Richardson. Season's high, as we said earlier, 19 in round 10. Richardson, sharp angle, good effort. Narrowly misses. Increases the lead. In fact, it doubles the lead. 80 plays 78. The Tigers starting the day outside the eight. Trying to force their way in. They've got to win this afternoon. And the Dockers looking for their third win in four weeks on the improve. Looking to retain their momentum. Parker taking plenty of time. Short to the pocket. Harding. What a comeback he's made. We we're on for the short one. Just drifting across. Harding into Mines. That's very untidy. Terrible. It's taken by Campbell. Harding anxious to make amends. Well, that's very interesting. Our angle isn't the best. My initial reaction there was he touched it across the line. But the goal umpire in perfect position. Yeah, he was. I had the same reaction as you, Dennis. It looked like the ball was already over the line, but he was desperate then to Greg Harding. I don't know what he was thinking with that short kick. He said he was in two minds. But that looked, uh, I'll leave it up to the goal umpire, that one. Yep. Greg Harding, all sorts of pressure. His side settles down now at half-back. Clement towards half-forward. Turns around the back towards Waterhouse. Runs onto it. Needs to settle on the right foot. Kicks it across goal. They're not going to get a mark in this one. It's forced over the line, out of bounds. A boundary throw in. Well, that's what Fremantle wanted, Terry. Get it out of that danger zone. Richmond looking very dangerous, peppering the goals. A quick transference to play. This time they've got it deep inside their 50. I think that's what Fremantle want, but more specifically, that's what Greg Harding want. Adrian Fletcher off. Heath Black on. A strange move. And there's Modra again the Palais turn. Still practicing. He is. Yeah, Fletcher off. That's a that funny is a one, strange one. Unless, unless he's looking to set something up, Damien Drum. Because Fletcher would be, in essence, the on-field coach of this side. Andrew Calloway gives it to Duncan Calloway. The Calloway system. It's football, not golf. And a bit of disarray at the moment. Criminal. have got Wills picking up Richardson, which is where this is going. So Richardson takes the mark in that sort of a matchup. He's never going to be quite as troubled as with the taller defender. He kicks a good one in towards Platt. Platt under pressure from Harding, couldn't take the mark. It's at ground level, centre half forward. Platt looking to find the way out the back door. Does to Knights. Campbell on out wide as still finds Richardson by himself. The big man on the charge, closing at 40. He kicks, he's kicked his fifth. Five goals, five to Matthew Richardson. That's a fair bit of footy in anyone's language. Yeah, he's been sensational and uh, really Fremantle. Don't know what they were trying to do there. They were in total disarray, as I called. Wills was the only player back there to man up on Richardson. James Clement was caught up the ground, manning up on no one. Fremantle all looking around at each other, trying to work out who was supposed to be on who. And uh, by that time, it's too late when it gets to Richardson and it's a goal. Great acceleration. We've seen it a few times today. Sensed he was clear. And away he went. Richardson has been the key. We thought he would be coming in. Wills out of the middle. Floating it down towards half forward. Awkward bounce there for Waterhouse. Knocked out by Kellaway. Taken by Knights. Knights towards half forward. Dockers have got the numbers. Parker comes up to meet it. Just outside the defensive 50 to Wirra. Wirra around the outer side. Waterhouse waiting. Duncan Kellaway got across on the angle in front. Tigers playing very well. Little one to Campbell and Kellaway. Kick to half forward. Well, now McManus is back there on Richardson. Picked up by Parker. Across it comes to McManus. McManus drives the ball towards the outer side. Michaels in front. Andrew Kellaway right there with him. And it trickles across the boundary line. Dennis, uh, Adrian Fletcher and Chris Bond both on the bench for Fremantle at the moment. Uh, nothing wrong with either of them. Uh, looks like they're just having a rest, getting set for the big last quarter. Eight points the margin. Tigers in front. Just the one goal for the Dockers in this term. 
Campbell. He's lifted certainly. Wills on the ground. Taken away by Knights. His forward handball bounces out in front of Andrew Calloway. Kicks well into Richardson. He's racking them up. Mark number 14. Big man looks downfield. Unloads. 60 metre kick. Threatening. Dockers defence stands up. Stephen O'Reilly. In short to Parker. Two key men in defence to Prescott. Against his old side for the first time. Always a great incentive to do well. McManus out wide. Bowden's right there with him. McManus turns his opponent around. Gives it into Waterhouse. It's too short. Wills doing the backing up. Dockers can't quite find the footy. And now the Tigers have it. And there is absolute acres of space out here for them. Campbell a couple of bounces. Make that three. Over the top of the plat. Turns, runs into a little bit of trouble, sets up now beautifully to Samson. Just too much space then, Terry. The Dockers are, are really finding it hard to get their matchups right in their back half. Just finding loose players far too easily. They're trying to start Bandy as a loose man back there. He's getting picked up by Harrison. That leaves O'Reilly free, and Brad Wirra was also free. They had two spare men down there, but they still couldn't find players to match up on. It's unbelievable, really. So Clay Sampson, who kicked six goals against the Dockers last year, but for the Adelaide Crows. His best return for the Tigers has been two last week. He's matched it here this week. Sampson with his second goal. The Tigers now have kicked the last five. And danger signs for Fremantle now as the Tigers are looking so much more confident. Richardson's unstoppable up forward. And Fremantle with... Adrian Fletcher, who has been one of their major ball getters, sending them forward each time on the bench. If it is just to rest him for the last quarter, they would hope that they're still in touch and he can make the difference in that last quarter. Certainly Wayne Campbell's been a catalyst. 22 possessions now for him. Back in the middle, Brody Holland's over the ball, feeds it wide to Bandy. Bandy, a kick towards the half-forward line for the Dockers. Coming across is Wirra, ship just on the ground. Had it knocked away by Knights. Knocked down there by Gale. It comes back to him from Wirra. Long hand pass and a good one. Got the way to Wills. Wills goes long. It's very close. I think it's a goal. He likes it. They needed it. I needed that goal badly against the flow. Richmond starting to really dominate the game. And that puts the Dockers right back up there again. A good kick by Wills. He only went off one step. Looked like he rushed it a little bit, but he got it through, which is the main thing. Freeman are still working to try and get their matchups right in their back half. It's Greg Harding now, the loose man. Players still looking a little bit bemused about where they're meant to be playing and who they're picking up. So Andrew Wills gives his best return to the Dockers this year. Three goals just when they needed it. Back to within eight points. They need to follow up here now, but they can't. Matthew Knight drives it forward to the Tigers and Plapp an excellent mark under pressure. Acts to play on, now told to do so by the umpire. Tosses it up to centre forward. Samson's going to have to go. It was a late reaction. Kickett wanted it first. He wins it. Gives it to Norwich. The docker is away. We're up. We're down to under two minutes of play. We're attacks the square. Modra in front, Gasper behind, Modra one hand, has to get up and get the football, can't do it, the Tigers are all there in numbers. Turns it back out, Gale now, back for the Dockers again, Waterhouse camped underneath it, Tigers look better in control at halfback just at the moment, Broderick takes the mark, faints a handball, then actually delivers it, Dragosevic, he goes on towards Ottens, big leap, kick it there, it's over the line and out. Opportunity for the Dockers. Yeah, they miss, missed that opportunity, Terry. Gale's kick really gave, gave Waterhouse no chance. Just sat it up over his head. Getting close enough for Modra to get a hand on it. And that close, you need to make the most of it. Bandy in front. Does it all himself. Wobbles into half forward. White, like Waterhouse, on the turn. Floats it on over the top. Here they come again through Wirra. Wirra 60 metres out, looking for Modra too tall. 
Kellaway gets in behind. Duncan takes the mark. Spots Harrison. About 50 seconds to go in the term. Can the Tigers get a late goal? Harrison towards the outer side. Magnificent mark. Clap. How strong is his hands at the moment? Back to Harrison. He had to wait. Stopped his momentum. He's forward of the wing still. Kicks down towards the 50. Richardson over the top. O'Reilly angles it out of bounds. We're down to 33 seconds. That was a strong mark by Platt. He led about 40 metres extremely hard. Sprinting all the way and still took a strong mark in front of his eyes. Boundary throw in. Holland's in front. Clean possession. Hurriedly down towards full forward. Richardson and O'Reilly kick it. In from the side, but a free kick to O'Reilly. Kick it's hurt. He landed hard. 23 seconds. O'Reilly comes out to McManus. End to end football. McManus away. One bounce. Running it up towards the wing. The Tigers lead by eight points. We're down to 15 seconds ah. remaining in the turn. McManus puts it out of bounds on the full. Yeah, just undecided. McManus have where to kick the ball, there wasn't anyone moving up, Dale kick it, sensational mark even though O'Reilly got the free kick for being pushed under the ball. Hollands controls it well, breaks away, spears the pass in, taken by Sampson, hit the ground running, Sampson beaten by the siren. The siren has sounded, Sampson was 15 metres out and closing. And I would imagine Richmond fans in Melbourne just slumped to their knees. Open goal, beckoned, how was he to know? What oh. rotten luck for Clay Sampson. Yes, you can clap. <laughs> Doesn't that make a difference? Oh. Just not knowing how long to go in that quarter. Sampson could have easily have held that mark up, even though there was space around him. If he had have known, gone back and taken his kick, finished off with a goal in that. It really would have been a pitch goal to Richmond because they just got it down there with so little time in the clock. And as it was, the Dockers saved by the siren. Will we talk about that after the game? Will that be pivotal in the outcome? Who knows? The Tigers' great term there. Five goals to two. Should have been six. But Samson did the right thing. He was storming across half forward, took the mark, just carried on. 49-13-7, .9, three-quarter time at Subi.
The Tigers have turned this one around. The second leg of our Sunday doubleheader. They've come back strongly in that third term. They lead at three-quarter time now at Subi. It's 14-9 to 13-7. The 1999 AFL Coca-Cola Premiership season proudly brought to you by Telstra, making life easier. The McDonald's Footy Burger, the double quarter pounder with cheese. Foster's Light Ice for extreme refreshment. And the new Mitsubishi Magna 3.5, the next generation. And I've got to say, the AFL is now on the net, so our friends in Reykjavik could be listening to this broadcast. Or anywhere for that matter. Games are broadcast on the net now, so check it out, along with the facts, the figures, everything you want to know about the AFL. There it is, www.afl.com.au. And speaking of good things, Just Footy, you can record your own music on audio cassette and send it to Just Footy. You can see the address there, and Wayne Carey will have a listen. Let's go down to Barra. Thanks, Dennis. Yes, uh, Mark Riley, assistant coach of the Dockers Bomber. Adrian Fletcher on the bench that quarter, what happened there? Yeah, just a breather for the last 10 minutes, it's a big ground, Fletcher start the first bounce in the middle now. Matthew Richardson the key now, who's yeah, going to have the job? In a very good quarter, young Carroll will probably line up on him and see how we go there. This uh, breeze, what do you think? I oh, know breeze, but we used a lot of petrol uh, getting back from that five goal start, so uh, we'll see how much we've got left in the tank, Barry. Good luck mate. Okay, so for the final term, Adrian Fletcher. Could be a lot of second guessing. He's back on the ground now. And he brings 17 possessions to the table. It's a big job for young Carroll, isn't it? He's having a go at Richardson. Right into it. Yes. They're having a box on down at half forward. Meantime, Fletcher gets it out of the centre, kicks it out towards the wing. Brody Holland arrived quickly, feeds it wide to Norris, back to the voice of Harding. Meantime, Carroll and Richardson have split up. The floating kick, Fletcher almost the mark, so he's reinvigorated. Walker's got the ball, evades one, evades two. Fletcher got fingertips to it. Michael with a runner outside and the man on. Holland over the top, Wills running in. His fourth goal, he's missed. I think he's gone out in sympathy of Clay Sampson. Not getting his allowed <laughs> on the siren. Wilsey thought, we'll square uh, it up, I'll miss this one. Well, it was simply a question of run in, take a deep breath and sink it. That's a, it's a very important miss this stage of the game, start of the last quarter. Almost too much time to think. And Wills has missed. Oh, that's a terrible miss. He knows that, Damien Drum. Still, it's down there in. Knights. Campbell continues to bob up. Kellaway is trying so hard in the crunches and the clinches today kicks up towards the wing but it wasn't a good kick and that should be 50 Harding takes the mark Chaffee gives away the 50 and this really does hurt because now it becomes the old seven point play Wills did miss but that's a bonus point if Harding can kick this goal he yeah, made a mess of that Richmond coming out from that kick in Callaway's kick very poor first up and whether it was frustration on Chaffee's behalf it's very very costly for your side Gives Harding a shot at goal that uh, will put the Dockers right back in it. Greg Harding back today after only three weeks out with that collarbone injury. Chaffee immediately off the ground. His back is turned as Harding kicks the goal. Well, he certainly didn't want to watch that one. Chaffee, as he came off, didn't stop to look around and he would have heard the response from the crowd and known the result. I'm sure he'll be on the phone to the boss, Jeff Geeshan, just to let him know how costly that indiscretion is. Just a lazy little push. Wasn't going to gain anything from it, but it certainly cost their side a lot. Goal to the dock is one point of difference, and it gets pretty exciting now. Who can get the ball out of the centre, get it going forward? Chaffee to the interchange bench. Greg Harding back to half back. Game number 57, goal number two. None more important. Dockers now back in front. None had trial by just one. Tigers, Hollands, Ben Hollands. Front position at half forward. Waste no time. In towards the pocket. Claps hands who have been so strong all day. Fail him at the last moment. Clement turns it back around towards the outer side. Fletcher who spent time on the interchange bench in the third quarter to freshen up for this last 
misses the mark. Turned back by Richardson. Campbell, eyes darting this way, that way. Attacks the square. The spoil will have to come. It doesn't. Platt marks. That's a good strong mark in that situation. Players running from everywhere. Richardson was trying to set himself. And I think, again, the Dockers players probably more aware of trying to stop Richardson's run at the ball. And uh, Platt just held his ground, took a very good mark. So the Tigers by one point. Platt gets his second goal. One in the second and now one in the last quarter. Yeah, well played by Richmond to work the ball forward. Didn't like the kick from Clement. Just tried to kick it around the corner. He had spotted Fletcher, but those kicks around the corner, you just don't have enough control. Put Gave Fletcher an enormous amount of work to do. He couldn't grab the mark, and it sent Richmond back going forward, and they end up with a goal and get that break again. Tigers by seven points. Early going final term. Double-headed Sunday from Subi. It's been a good game from the get-go. Knocked down by Michael, taken by Fletcher. Boots it down towards the wing. Now it's a foot race. McManus outnumbered. Walker did well. Knights knocked it away from McManus across the line. So a lot of effort expended there for no return. Boundary throw in. Then it's some bench news. Uh, Ashley Prescott, ex-Tiger, still on the bench for Fremantle. And Stephen O'Reilly for Richmond. Benny Gar looks to be finished for the day with a badly caught thigh. And they're both okay, Prescott and O'Reilly? Yes, both fit as a fiddle. Boundary throw in. Ottens and Michael. Michael directs it down. Broderick in a tight situation. Harding couldn't complete the mark. Well done by Hollands and Sampson. Both of them applying pressure. And they tie it up. Bounce. Down towards half forward for Richmond. 99 plays, 92. Just under 18 minutes till full time. The cool light of the week leading up to a game. You pick your best players to start on the ground. Now in the heat of the contest, Damien Drummer's taken some of these starting players off. It does seem to be a big gamble at this stage. Fletcher tried to give it across to support. Campbell played it very well. Great use of the body. Turned around and kicked it to Holland. Holland told to play on now. Did he move off the line? Matters not. He kicks it down towards full forward. Richardson and Carroll. Holding well, on. it's going to be a free kick to Richardson against Carroll. Carroll was in front. Watch it again. Just holding Richardson's jumper. You'll see the pull yep. there by Carroll. Just got caught under the ball. No doubting that. So a huge gamble by Damien Drum here because you had the feeling for long periods of the game since that sensational start by Richardson. O'Reilly had done well. Still he knows his players better than we do. Richardson going at his sixth. His third of the second half. Slides it across the face. A reprieve for Carroll and the Dockers. The margin is out to eight points. Richardson, six goals, five. Reflecting his return last week. And Stephen O'Reilly reflecting his fortunes. The fullback played grand final football for Geelong. Has a ton of experience. So Damien Drum working the balance between experience and fresh young legs out there just at the moment. Parker brings it into the outer side. Fletcher roving well at the front. Gives it off to Harding. His kick across the body. Finds Norwich. Outer side looking up into the sunshine. Finds some run through the centre in Weirah. Can keep going. He has kick it in support. Decides now to kick longer oh. in towards a no lead in actual fact. Harrison was caught behind. Bandy takes it from behind. Holland, Brody Holland leaves it for Kickett, who left it for Holland. Holland has to come again. Waterhouse comes in to clean up. He's out. He settles. He's on the right foot. Can he bring it back? No. Well, a lot of indecision there. First, the kick from Wirra. I don't know who he's looking for. He had plenty of time to have a look, and his kick just went to no one. But Freeman will then created something out of nothing. Waterhouse has a look, does the right thing, steadies up but really didn't look balanced as he kicked it and uh, paid the price. 1-1 one, one to Clive Waterhouse. Dockers trail by seven. Waterhouse a second chance. Great mark. Chip kick. Adventurous. Knights as well. Attacked at the ship. Charging through. Drags it back around. Modra slips. 
Gaspar goes down. Free kick to Gaspar. Advantage to the Tigers. The pressure valve eases ever so slightly. Knight carries it from half back. A couple of bounces. A push from behind. An excellent mark in front of Ben Holland. To centre half forward. Kick it. Richardson in front. Kick it from behind. Carroll cleans it up from the top of the contest. Samson does well. Carroll's in all sorts of bother now. Oh. Fletcher. Chip kick out to Harding. Back into the side. One bounce. Oh. Not quite good to Wills. Cleans it up now. Pressure from behind. Stands. Kicks high. There's no one there for the Dockers. Callaway takes the mark. Looks to the outer side. Decides to hold it up. Well, the it Dockers costly. were very lucky, weren't they? Trent oh. Carroll had to be holding the ball. Very lucky up there into the ground. Then how costly. Just a, a poor handle by Harding to Wills. And he had to uh, prop onto his left foot and bang it in high. Proctor. Campbell. Coming up for his 28th possession. As I mentioned earlier in the day, in five games against the Dockers, averages 30 possessions. A couple of 32s in there. We're probably better that this afternoon. Ottens was up. Chaffee's back on the ground. Wills feeds it back. Carroll, awkward half volley. Controlled it pretty well. Needed a kick. It was an untidy hand pass. Kellaway hard against the line. Was that on the full? No, uh, rolled out. Just spilled off his boot and actually rolled over the boundary line. So boundary throw in. 15-10, 14-9. Good call. Andrew umpire was fouled. Now free kick is going to Knights. Or is it Ottens? Ottens with the ball. Goes across the ground. Didn't spot ship. Got his fingertips to it in front of Daffy. Fletcher, who's been terrific. Walker comes back to Harding. Look at Norris running hard. He can take this one. Move inside the 50. Campbell's tracking him. Oh! It's run out of bounds. <laughs> He has like run out of bounds. He was like a bocce player running alongside his ball. They just look a little bit nervous at the moment, Freeman. They're going forward and they look like they've got <laughs> some great opportunities and they're really making a meal of them at the moment. It was botched. Oh, it's thrown it in. Bandy knocks it down. Goes after it again. Waterhouse, the impossible angle. Hooks it back right on the line. Gaspar reaches over the top and angles it through for a behind. Six points the Tigers. Their defence under siege at the moment. Gasper with Modra. Campbell to himself. Then out wide. Oh. Looking for Proctor and finds him. A difficult one to take looking into the western sky. Callaway couldn't do it. Fletcher. Well, if he needed the rest, he's showing it with... He is out there now. I'm not sure whether he did need it, though. Keeps getting possessions. Adrian Fletcher. Six already in this term. Refueled the tank, and he's out and away. Bandy. This has dried up a little. Started so ever so well. Free kick. Dockers way. Damien Drum. Seven years as a player at Geelong. Just 63 games. Did it the hard way. Knows no other way. In his first year as coach of the Dockers. Into half forward. Waterhouse. Strong mark by Clive Waterhouse. He's been a good player again today. Really working hard the last month. His form really has helped the Dockers get back into some good form as well. But this is an important kick. Missed an easier one earlier on. Has to really get this one on. Just to calm the Dockers down a little bit again and get them moving forward. Goal kicking is his forte. That's what he's here to do. Only he and Tony Modder have kicked more than five for the Dockers in any one game. That is a great kick, Clive. Two goals this afternoon. A most important get. Yeah, that certainly was. And he's working hard, Waterhouse. He he stays always within scoring distance, very rarely comes too far up the ground. Partly, I also think part of his position getting in the last few weeks has taken a little bit away from Tony Modra because he hasn't had to come as far up the ground. He's been a bit more stuck in the goal square. But here go Fremantle. 100 points apiece in the foreground. Daffy, nobody near him. 
They didn't sort it out too well on the centre square, the Dockers. They need to win this ball, and they do. Wills sockers it towards half forward. Chaffee hit it hard, anxious to make amends to Campbell again. Very clever. Got it across to Kellaway to Campbell once more. That was ambitious. Going back, McManus gets it away to Harding, feeds it back to Bond. Men on on the outer side. Goes to Bandy. Bandy, the defensive side of the wing, to the middle. Norrish, he's working hard. Kick it is running oh, hard. No. The kick's a shocker. Picked up by Knights. Knights to Sampson. Sampson deserves a goal. He goes across towards Daffy. Back it comes to Sampson. Remember the siren before three-quarter time. He's hooked it too much. It's a behind. And the Tigers are back in front. Well, what can we say about that kick from Jason Norris? It is just a dangerous kick, and there is no room for error. Generally, if you're going to make that kick, you want to make sure that the guy it's going to has got room to make a mistake and still recover and get the ball away. On that occasion, kick it didn't have the room. Knights intercepted, and it really nearly punished the Dockers badly. Clay Sampson's behind. Gives Richmond the lead by that margin. One point. McManus. Richardson stands the mark. Richardson arguably the dis difference between the two sides. And oh. McManus just gives the ball over and then Carroll gives a 50 metre penalty away. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, undisciplined play again. I, I tell you what, I was concerned young Trent Carroll of his attitude when he came out at, after three quarter time to take on the task. He seemed as though he wanted to take Richardson on physically and wasn't uh, there to play the game. And here you just throw it down like that. Yeah, all That's players know the rules, Terry. They know the rules. You've got to hand it back. Can't just throw it on the ground. And he's uh, paid the ultimate price here as Knights is going to line up. So the skipper, Matthew Knights, third year in that position. Just three goals this year. This is an important one. It's a good one for the Tigers. The skipper's done it. Richmond break the deadlock. They're out to seven points in front. And there's a lot of footy left in this game, but players from both sides making some discipline errors there. For Sean McManus, again, the last couple of kicks coming out of the back line for the Dockers, Jason Norrish and Sean McManus just taking low percentage kicks. The Dockers again in a little bit in disarray, trying to work out their matchups, not knowing who's meant to pick up who. Harding's come up on Daffy in the foreground now. It's he's interesting because McManus is a player who's dropped back in the hole and McManus really is a wingman and you'd think he would line up there. Bandy thumps it down towards half forward. Chaffee once more, that's holding the ball surely. Play goes on. Well, no big pardons. Whistle, ball up. And with McManus being the man back there, John, I mean, he's just not using the ball well enough either as an individual player to, to set things up. And the, the runner's now made the change. Put, McMan uh, put McManus back up onto the wing and Harding back, but you think those players between them should be experienced enough to work it out. Bandy, two-fisted towards half forward. Andrew Killaway is in front, Ship's got him. He's a feisty customer. Fletcher has been terrific. Killaway ran him down. McManus has got it now. Dockers trail by seven points. Probing kick. Waterhouse being held on to. Yes, he's going to get a free kick. Waterhouse causing Rogers some problems. McManus off, Gale back on. And Waterhouse will kick it goal. You can see the free from just outside the 50, not beyond him. That last one went through at about three-quarter goalpost height. Will he get onto this? Hasn't got the carry, it's just tailing off a behind. So the margin is back to six points. Ten and a half minutes to go, so plenty of time here at Subi. 2-2 to Clive Waterhouse. Andrew Wills has three goals. Clint Michael has three goals for the Dockers. Richardson, five for the Tigers. Campbell, chip kick into Harrison. Not too much of an advantage to his side there because all that does is declare you to go to one side. Harrison long to that outer side. Michael from behind. Just had it covered all the way over the other two big men in Bandy and Ottens. Gives it to Norwich. This kick also not a good one. Callaway, Waterhouse from behind. He made it. Well, he had to because that was a very average kick from Jason Norrish. Got under the football and it just went up high. 
Callaway was in the prime position and Waterhouse just committed himself to that contest. Ran hard. I think initially he just ran hard to try and make sure that Callaway wasn't going to take the mark and with his explosive pace got there and took a great mark himself. 30 goals last season on 23 now. Make that 24. Waterhouse has the last two. And he's really coming of age as a footballer for the Fremantle Dockers. Sure, a lot of tuition from Damien Drum explaining exactly how he wants him to play. And it just seems as though he's taken all that on board and just doing what, he, what the team needs him to do. He's doing so much more hard work than he ever has. He's still getting the results of kicking a few goals every week. Getting a lot of the football. Been outstanding for the Dockers over the last month. Well, the former South Australian Clive Waterhouse, one of the most exciting players in Western Australia, former number one draft pick, Bandy, it's all square again, Knights the skipper, digs it out of the middle, was that a push in the back, play goes on, it looked a bit dubious, Harding gets back, plenty of time, Bandy is on across the ground, so too Bond, Bond has got it, pulls rank, comes away, Norrish, awkward half volley, controlled it brilliantly, Bond runs on aggressively, it comes back to Bond, he's going down towards half forward, look for Kicker to be on the end of this one, Kicker can run to 50, nobody challenging, Waterhouse is on for the hand pass, Clive turns around, bang, it's another one, the dock is on fire. Well they are on fire, good hard running, aggressive running by all Dockers players from the back line, Dale Kicker, sensational work, kept himself involved in the play, you see that all the players running down. Chris Bond set himself away and then ran hard in support. Excellent bit of football by the Dockers to put themselves back in front. The last quarter for Frio has been their heaviest scoring quarter this year. Coming into today's game, they kicked 46 goals in the last quarter compared to 34 in their first quarters. They've kicked four. Waterhouse has three of them. Bowden's the new opponent back on Clive Waterhouse. Bandy's ready to do the centre bounce work. Six points, Frio lead. Reminiscent of round one against the West Coast Eagles when the Eagles were out to a six goal lead. Dockers failed by four points. Campbell pushes it back towards the Tigers goal square. Richardson's lurking, picks it up, can't get the foot to it. Has a second go, Harding does the tackling front on courageously and strongly. It looks like he's hurt himself a little bit. He's OK, Harding's up, holding his arm. It looks OK, and just great desperation by the Dockers players here. Richardson had an eerie first up. And Harding just put his body in, in the way. He said, if you're going to kick a goal, you're going to have to kick it straight through me. Harding injured a collarbone back in 97 in round 18. Has missed three weeks this year from the same injury. Looks very proper on the outer side with that arm. Holding it very gingerly. But on this near side, it's Gale. Mark Gale keeps it along the boundary line. There's space here for Fletcher if he wants to keep going. Does, uses ship. Ship in front of Modra, there's space for him. Bodley can't take it, picks it up, had more time than he knew. He's kicked it, no he hasn't. Sorry Tony. <laughs> He's not happy with that goal on by. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same one. He's not having a lot of luck down this end. He certainly looked like uh, he was confident it went through. He did have more time than he realised. He, uh, I don't think he realised he'd got rid of Gasper so easily. And a, a late swing of the ball. Yep, behind, no question about that. Daffy from half back up towards the wing, bounces towards the boundary line and goes out. So just under eight minutes to go. The margin, a solitary goal. 16 12, the Tigers chasing the Dockers on 17 12. It's just been a quality game all day. Bandy goes after it. Holland gathers it into the path of Knights. Awkward bounce for him, wouldn't sit. Clement goes after it in turn. Coming through, kick it brilliantly picked up Daffy. Away to Knights. Knights looking for Richo. Coming across is Parker not in time. Richardson has marked this to tie it up from 15 metres out. 
Great kick by Matty Knights, just cruising past the contest. Ball got flicked out to him. He's had to assess the situation, saw Richardson floating back. Parker, pretty valiant attempt to try and get a fist on it, but too big. Richardson, his sixth of the afternoon, scores a level. What a performance by Matthew Richardson. And what a game. Both sides have had times where they could have given this one away. The Dock is early, more recently the Tigers, but neither will. Credit to both teams. Yeah, it's been some exciting football played today. Matthew Richardson showing us today how good he really is. Been in great form and carried it on today. Just been unstoppable every time he's gone for the ball. Matthew Richardson, goalless in round one, has now got his third bag of six. Six goals, six to the big man. Wills for the Dockers. Holland drops it. Brody Holland for the Dockers. Gets a second chance on the right foot. Out the path of Gale. He can take it and go. He takes it and stops. A good option there, I think. He was running towards the boundary line. He was going to make it a pretty hard angle. Just take his time now. Steady up. Come back. He's got a pretty good shot at goal. But after Brody Holland dropped that easy mark, very good play because uh, he spun around and spotted Gale. Gale deliberately. An excellent kick from the young man. Well, how important is this next bounce down now? Getting to this stage in the game. The Freeman I can get it and go forward, put another score on the board. That'll really put the pressure on Richmond. Richmond are now looking forward. Another goal. And panic does start to set in a little bit. They start to worry about how, how long to go. There's plenty of time. Real tight game. Just over six and a half minutes remain. Doc is back on top. The margin six points. Bandy slaps it down. Knights out of the centre. There's a certain pattern developing. They're going one for one in there. Carroll knocked it down. Samson couldn't control it. Clement storms away. Gets it across to Prescott. Just recently on the ground. He kicks the half forward. Going back with courage is Kellaway. Andrew Kellaway wasting no time to Bowden. Who can normally kick it a long way. Tried too hard that time. Got underneath it. High ball through the centre square. Kick it worked out of it. Samson knocked away by Wills. But there's going to be a free kick. And it's going, I think, to Samson. Samson's got it. Well, at this stage of the game, you don't want to give away those silly free kicks. That's what's happened on this occasion. Held too long, as you can see. Clay Samson then, 60 metres from goal. Richardson will be the target, no doubt. Too much carry on the kick. Carroll got a fist on it. Waterhouse is back in defence for the moment. What will he do here, Clive? Plenty of time to think. Runs across the face. Well, that's a nothing kick. It goes out towards Rogers. Rogers is tackled, held a long time. Diving in out there was Plap over the top, goes kick it. We'll have a bounce. What was Waterhouse thinking there? That was a dangerous kick. Very dangerous kick, really didn't offer any bonus to the Dockers kicking it out in that contest and they're lucky to get away with that one. So the pressure on everybody, umpires, players and more particularly coaches on the boundary line. Dockers turn it back, Bowden's got it. 70 metres out from goal. Richardson will be his target. Richardson standing in the square. He wants it long and high. Bowden waits. A lead offered by Platt. Now Richardson dummies one. It's a game of cat and mouse. Who's going to crack first? Bowden gives in. He's going to kick long. Doesn't get onto it well. It spins. Richardson's behind. Pushes the pack. In front. At the back. Samson. Turns around. Has a good look. This is an excellent kick. Hollands has got it. Ben Hollands has plucked it from over the top. Samson. Knew what was going on, has a good look over the top of Harrison and Bond. Good mark in the end, Bond working hard to try and get back. It's a good option by Sampson just to get the ball back in front of goal. It's Clive Waterhouse 
been treated for cramp. He's up and going now, but I'd like to see him back down forward because he has been dangerous. So Holland, who spent time on the Sydney list in 96, then back to North Albury. The boy from the bush is happy. He's got it. Old square, 120 apiece. Well, a sensational game of footy as it has been all day. Both sides really gone hard at it, running hard. They'll start to tie now, but this is where they've got to dig deep. And someone's going to become a hero today in these last few minutes of this game. Now the centre bounce is so important. And you don't want to give away any of those silly free kicks that we've seen in this last quarter because they are crucial now. Good work moments ago by Clay Sampson. 17 possessions. He's been lively on the forward line. And has played with that luck as we saw after the three-quarter time siren. Just kept his head in the pocket. Centred the ball. The centre square vital now. Scores a level. Four and a half minutes to go. It's bouncing around in there. Campbell put down. Knights has been terrific. So too Fletcher. Kicks it towards half forward and Black. Hit his head. Hit it back to Norrish. Norrish kicks it long. Bandy has run off the centre square, missed the mark, dropped his head. Bandy goes after it, spills wide, chance for Gale in the grasp, gets it to Wills. Wills can go over the top to Ship, Ship turns around to be sure and slams it through. Doc is back in front. Good hard running by the Fremantle players, Gee, they pushed hard from that centre bounce. Bandy running down, dropped an easy mark, but he had teammates who had run with him all the way and they just had numbers around the ball. When they eventually got possession, just had created the loose man. First it went to Wills. I'm sure he'd been in that situation. He didn't thought about going back having his kick. And Andrew Ship got free in the goal square and made no mistake at all. A goal for goal last quarter. Andrew Ship puts the Dockers back in front by six. Scores have been level four times in this last quarter. But on three of those occasions, it's been the Dockers who have got the goal to break the deadlock and be in front. Richmond did it once early in the quarter. So it just seems that each time Richmond get there, the Dockers have an answer. Clive Waterhouse, three goals in this last quarter for the Dockers. Andrew Ship, the last one. Mark Gale, the one prior to that. Spins on out the back. Fletcher again, racking up possessions to half forward. Ship couldn't take the mark. Tigers with an opportunity. Dragosevic towards half forward for his side. Kick it, waited for it to come into the chest. Couldn't take the mark. It skips on out the back. Tigers with a chance, can't get the handball away. Dockers have numbers at the ball. Clement, his kick goes the wrong way in actual fact. Platt will be the first one onto it. Can't get the handball away. A pair of Dockers there, Norwich. Long towards the boundary line. Gale on the top again towards Fletcher to Parker. Cool in a crisis, the Dockers' defence. Exchange of handball. Eventually ends up with Greg Harding. Runs through the wing. His kick doesn't get there to Waterhouse. Turned back by Bowden. Dropped in short. Campbell turns again towards centre half forward. Richardson's in front. He should mark it. Interfered from behind. Not given. Here's the opportunity. Timmendale concedes ground back to Samson. Again, looking to set something up. Nothing to give. Now does to the far side and found them. Matthew Rogers. G. Harding's kick on the other side. It just needed more, didn't it? Waterhouse was away and inspired. He was inspiring himself running down towards the pocket. It makes a huge difference again. Just a matter of inches in these games. Certainly some of these Richmond players have been kicking under pressure and uh, no more so than this one. Matthew Rogers to square the game once again. Has missed. The mighty roar goes around Subiaco Stadium. Well, that, that can be a very costly miss or it may be a crucial miss for, uh, for Richmond just uh, now. Five points of difference, and the Dockers have got to try and clear it out of the area. They'd love to get it straight down the other end. Oh, oh Parker kicks it in directly. And the mark has been taken by Hollands. Well, inexplicable. 
So Hollins in the pocket with a chance to give the Tigers the lead. Now, if you've tuned in, wanting the news on the East Coast, it's coming up immediately after the football. We've got 1.40 remaining to be played. Not an important kick for the young man here. It's close. I tell you what, that's a great effort under pressure. What a wonderful kick. Ben Hollins. Well, that's a seven-point play, Dennis, that we saw Fremel have the opportunity earlier in the game, and that's an unbelievable turnover from the kick-in. With not long left on the clock, you just would have loved to have seen Shane Parker just kick it to the best percentage option outside 50 make it at least if there's a turnover as hard as possible for richmond to score but gave it up what a wonderful st stage australian rules football presents ben hollands has stood up there he's delivered for the D tigers they are now one point in front here they come again proctor from the wing to half forward richardson caught behind protects himself with his hand they go to ground dockers swarm in on the ball Carroll tries to get it out, does so to kick it. Clock ticks down to one minute of play left. Gale holds it up a little. The crowd roar, keep going, keep going. Tacking the ball, Ship loses it out towards Holland and it's over the line and out of bounds. Clock stops at 52 seconds. Andrew Ship, young man from Jembrook in the Yarrow Valley in Victoria. Playing now with the Dockers. Drop down, Callaway quickly onto the boot. Bounces again through the interchange. One point the difference. Richmond 127, Freo 126. Boys, the tension down here is unbearable. It's unbelievable. Jeff Gishan working the phones. 42 seconds to go. Michael to Prescott. Can't get away. McKee tied him up. Daffy dives on top of it. That's holding the ball, surely. That is, yes. 32 seconds to go. The Dockers, they've got to move it, and they've got to move it quickly. Fletcher has been terrific. 1913 to 1912, the spiral. It needs a mark. Madra launches himself, trying to juggle it out of there as Bowden. Slapping it, Goldwood was Waterhouse. Madra can't emerge from the pack. Down goes McKee, thumps it wide. Chance for the Dockers, taken by Ship. And passes back towards the middle. Kick it, tried to knock it. In comes Hollands. Hand passes for the line. It's out of bounds. And the clock is stopped on three seconds. There's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do now. Those expressions tell it all. It's in the hands of the players. One final roll of the dice. The Dockers need to grab it and kick a score. Michael goes up. It's in the air. Wait for the siren. Tigers win. Tigers win. What a great victory. What a great victory. Fantastic performance by the Tigers. They've gone goal for goal in this final period. Jeff Geeshan believed it. He'd be delighted with this performance. Richmond win by a point at Subiaco.
Good, 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 Good,